Provinces in my empire build aqueducts and say my name's Augustus. It's the Pax Romano. I wear a laurel and robe. It's called the toga, though. I build those Roman roads and your tax. Salvete omnes, salvete amici. Welcome to the stream this evening. Nomen mihi est decimus Aurelius Ingenarius legatus et prefectus provinciae Australiae. Hello, I am uh, Decimus Aurelius Ingenarius uh, of the province of Australia for Nova Roma. Welcome to tonight's uh, stream, the fourth assembly of the Republic of Rome board game. Um, it should be a fascinating session this evening. I'm certainly looking forward to it after a tumultuous third assembly where our, our team of senators uh, had a bit of a uh, um, unluckyfulness, uh, whatever the word that you want to insert there, uh, against a war. Uh, fortunately, Julius um, didn't do so well, copped heavy casualties against the First Punic War. Uh, hopefully, uh, the Senate will redeem themselves this evening. But uh, before we jump into the stream, I want to give a shout out to a, a special individual who's uh, started to assist us uh, in, in our game, and that's uh, Mr. Alan uh, Richborough. Uh, hopefully I've said your name correctly, and if you are uh, watching the stream this evening, uh, for those who don't know, Alan is the editor and author of the Living Rules set uh, that we're using this evening. Uh, we're up to version 1.06 Alpha, the, the latest Living Rules set, um, and uh, he's reached out to us and offered his assistance, and he's already uh, picked us up on some, some rules that we can do a little bit better and that we've uh, since implemented uh, since our last Third Assembly last week. So thanks to Alan, and if you're out there watching, um, it's uh, great to have you on board and, and helping us out here. All right, uh, so let's not delay. Let's, let's go jump into the Senate now. Uh, we're now going to uh, uh, take a brief moment to, while, we, while we transition. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. Okay, uh, we are live. Uh, everybody give a, a salve to everybody on the Twitch stream. Everyone say hello. Hello. <laughs> good. good. All right. Uh, I'm just checking audio levels here down beside me. Uh, it looks like uh, we're good there. Uh, if you are tuning in on the Twitch channel, just uh, give us a shout out if you hear some audio problems. But other than that, I think we are, we are good to go. Um, brilliant. Okay, let's jump into... Uh, I guess uh, the, the, the first mortality phase here, you guys all know what to do now. Uh, I'm bringing up the cheat sheet for those at home. What we need to do is just uh, check the wars, but we're okay for that at the moment. It's all about now gracefully aging our senators. So if everyone wants to go ahead, adding one to the age of each of your senators, please. Okay. Um, so don't forget your little black um, death chit tokens that we've got a pile of down the uh, the bottom there. Um, yeah, for each of your senators, age one. And uh, if they don't have one yet, be sure to give them one. Um, now for uh, helping out Cornelius Dolabella, can I get you a new one? What do you need this evening? Well, hang on, I've got... Just give me a minute. Sure, yep, no problem. I've got... Uh, hello yeah, to uh, Julius. Had to, Julius had to go up to six. Okay. And so, Valerius has to go up to five, and I've got those. Okay. What do you need? Uh, uh, I'll need, and I'll need now a seven for Achilles. A seven, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a hello there to uh, Jolly Dodge, three R. Jolly Jolly Dodge, yeah, I'm going to call you Jolly Dodge. Hopefully that's right. Uh, hello, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, and you want a seven. Uh, now an elder statesman. We'll grab a seven here. I'll drag that up to you now. And you can take the four away, please. I will take the four away at Thank your, you. at your okay. pleasure, sir. Okay, Killis is getting on. All right. Okay. So I think uh, I think everyone now is going to have an elder statesman. Is, uh, is that correct? Everyone's got a seven-aged senator? Yep. All right, um, so uh, I guess it's a good timely reminder um, that we are implementing the um, Avalon Hill rules associated with uh, voluntary retirement. Um, okay, I'm going to help out um, the optimates while we're here. Um, let's see. Send to back. Here we go. Fix that one up. Okay, so let's come back over here. You're welcome. Uh, right, so let's talk about um, voluntary retirement, and I'll just, um, if everybody pauses their movements for just a moment, moving tokens, I'm going to adjust everybody's view so you can all see what we're talking about here, um, is this voluntary retirement rule. So it's done in the revolution phase. If you want to keep some points, essentially, um, 
uh, which is the accumulated influence uh, of a senator that you can uh, put in the bank should there no be no end result at the end of the end of the game your maximum influence score will be the the winning key here so it's a gamble right so you can either um retire your eldest statesman or senator early and then you get to bank the influence provided it's uh, a minimum of 20 or over um if you don't then i guess um your uh you can only gain the the certain aspects as it reads in that paragraph there uh, or uh, if you uh, don't end up retiring him, he that senator will die, but you do not get to bank the, any of the influence that he had. Um, but you can read the caveats there. Um, so, well, th I think the, the primary caveat that we need to look at there is the voluntary retire any senator with influence greater than 20. So if you don't have a senator greater influence than 20, then I don't think you can voluntary re voluntarily retire him at this point. Okay? Um, is there anybody that does have an elder statesman that does have an influence of 20 or greater? Look. Don't think so. No, probably not. No. No. So it, it looks like, based on the way I read those rules, is that we're just going to eventually see them die. Um, but uh, what, is, what does that mean? Um, so they'll lose all the counters um, except for the faction leader uh, and talents. I'm just reading this next paragraph here. Uh, all these concessions will go to the forum. Uh, now, if you retire them, the player keeps the family card. Um, if the player does not control the family card, all the counters, including faction cards, are removed for that to the forum. Great. Um, natural death results there. So upon a natural death, the elder senator is never placed in the queue. Instead, his card is wiped clean, uh, as, as detailed above. So I'm reading 3.102.1 right now, uh, except all the money is now retained on the senator card. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, have a bit of a read of that um, in case we, we encounter that, um, but we just want to make sure that we implement that correctly. But hopefully n none of you should die, but we'll see based on some die rolls very shortly. Okay, so has everybody now finished um, aging their senators up? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so let's start with the highest ranking available officer, I think as the instructions dictate, uh, which is currently uh, in the Suidas da Panem at... Uh, uh, Kikrenis party and particularly the furious there is Rome Consul, so he's our current HRAO. Um, I would like you to roll a 1d6 for your uh, elder statesman, when in this case is Flaminus, and let's see if he survives. Uh, a 1, okay, safe. So it has to be a 6 to, to die, so Flaminus will live to see another year. Okay, let's move on to the Hand of God faction uh, with Terentius, who's now a elder statesman. Go ahead and roll a 1d6. Uh, yep. Six. Sorry. That's a three. He survives. <laughs> I, was, I was worried. Okay, to the Optimates uh, with Junius. Uh, he is now an old statesman. Give him a 1d6. Let's see if he lives on. How long does it stay on a six to survive? Uh, so when they become uh, eight years of age, it's now a five or a six that they die. Right. So you plus one for every die roll after that. Yeah. So, so is it worthwhile to retire them before they die? Well, ab absolutely. So provided they meet the, that minimum requirement of 20 influence or greater, um, yeah, absolutely retire them to, to bank that influence. Yeah. Um, right, it's, it's a gamble, right? How, long much, how much longer will they live that you can gain benefit from them being alive? Or if they're no longer serving a purpose, then it, it would be good to voluntarily retire them. But uh, all right. Um, the, uh, the Optimates, they roll, they got a four, um, so that's fine, survives. Let's go across to the Reaper's party. Uh, in this case here, it is uh, Achilles, uh, ID 12. Go ahead and roll a 1d6 there, um, Cornelius Dolabella. I notice the numbers are increasing with each roll. Okay, we're back to one, that's, that's good. Uh, and then let's go on to the uh, Taquinius Proprator faction with Manlius, who's uh, now up for, a, for an aging roll. Waiting, waiting anxiously for the die roll there from uh, Indominus. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah one, one, 1d6 to age Manlius to see if he lives. Oh, and we have a death. Okay, so uh, um, he has he has not survived. He has died of old age. Okay, so I'll take his... I'm just going to put his 7 token up out of the way for the moment, just up above. Let's, let's refresh our rules and let's see where Manlius goes. Okay. Uh, so a die roll of six results in the death of that senator for each number greater than seven, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, reading about elder statesmen there. Um, fine. Okay, so the natural death, 
The elder senators never placed in a curia, which normally would happen uh, in the standard rule set, but because we're implementing this, there's the slight variation. His cards wiped clean. He didn't have anything on him anyway. Uh, he didn't have any money to retain. Um, now, at this time, um, the faction gets to make an immediate one-time persuasion attempt against the now dead senator um, to see if they get to keep him um, for free, essentially. So what we need to do is um, subtracting the, the target's loyalty uh, and assuming that a senator is unaligned. So there's no plus seven alignment bonus here. So as if they're in the forum, as if you're making an unaligned persuasion attempt. Um, and that simulates... So, I mean, there's no money, which makes it even simpler again here. Uh, and this is all about simulating whether the heir would take up the family role, okay? Um, so any senator, even those not in Rome, even those not in Rome may make the attempt. So in Dominus, if you'd like to pick one of your senators now to make that persuasion attempt against Manlius as the target senator. Um, and the persuasion is using oratory? Uh, so influence is a big help here. All right, so it'll be uh, Cato the Elder. All right, Cato the Elder is going to be our man, all right, and we're going to open up our our uh, persuasion cheats sheets. Um, so if you'd like to all do the same, okay. And uh, I'm going to uh, request the, the data and the read-off again from Cato the Elder. So first of all, what is his oratory rating? Six. It is six. Uh, and what is his influence? Nine. For a total of? Fifteen. Okay, it's 15. All right, so we're calculating our base number here. Now we're going to look at the target senator, uh, which is Manlius. And what's his loyalty rating? Seven. It is seven. Okay, he has no um, uh, gold on him or anything like that. Uh, now, there's no mention of bribes at this point uh, in time. At least I don't think so, and I don't think that's the interpretation of the rules. Um, I'm going to have one final check uh, from our little uh, cheat sheet on the far right-hand side here. Right, so this is this is just uh, this is just for you. All right. Um, so um, again, you can still bribe um, should you feel the need to do so from a personal treasury, but uh, I don't think that's the case for Cato the Elder in this case. Okay, so let's go ahead. What's fifteen minus seven? Eight. 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 That's not a bad base number. Now what you need to do is roll two d six, and you need to get less than or equal to eight. So go ahead and roll two d six, and let's see if you get to hang on to Manlius. And he rolls a... Six. A six. So you get to keep him. So you can put him straight back into your, um, I guess, your set of senators there. And I guess Manlius' son or grandson has now uh, assumed the family name <laughs> within the Senate. Okay, so that was, a, that was an interesting ride. Uh, we saw one senator die, so you can see what the odds are like they're going forwards. Okay, that is enough of the mortality phase. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, I'll bring up the cheat sheet for everybody at home. Revenue phase. Alrighty, let's start with the uh, personal revenues. Um, this is the usual story. Um, now, because we have uh, nothing else to be concerned about, you can just give me one lump sum this evening. Uh, and noting that you will do the redistribution step immediately afterwards, um, it doesn't matter. So just one lump sum, so make sure, and I'll remind you all, three talents for your faction leader, one talent for all of your other non-faction leader senators. Uh, make sure you acquire all the talents for your concessions and then reveal their corruption bars, uh, except for our friend the fleet uh, commissioner, who only gets it from fleets, obviously. Don't forget, Pontifus Maximus gets an extra 1d6 talent on top of his already existing one income. Uh, and I think that's it in terms of all talent income. So everybody make up your sums now. And I'll get some banking ready to occur. All right. Uh, let's start with the uh, Indominus. Uh, Indominus, uh, how much money can I get for your faction this evening? 14, please. 14, okay. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I like those. Okay, it's now in your withdrawal zone. Very good. Uh, let's go to the Reapers party and Cornelius Dolabella. How much can I get you? Seven, please. Seven. I'll, I'll, I'll drag this to your section now. Bear with me. Thank you. Okay, there it is for you in your section. Okay. Uh, uh. Uh, let's go to the Optimates. Optimates, what can I get you? 
Uh, 14, please. 14. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, that's all good. Okay, it's now in your withdrawal zone. Hand of God faction, what can I get you? Uh, nine. Yeah, what? Nine? Okay, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I can't hear you. There we are. There you go. Hand of God faction. Uh, that's you. in your withdrawal zone. And, okay. and finally, uh, with you, uh, Sempronius, what can I get you? Fourteen. Fourteen. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Just make sure you do a count. Make sure I did, in fact, give you all the correct amount. And what I'm going to do for you, Sempronius, is I'm going to drag it up to you. So uh, uh, you, you don't have to go hunting for it. Okay, there you go. It's in your zone. Thank you. All right. Alrighty, let's have a look. So uh, at this point in time, ladies and gents, we, you can now undertake your redistribution. Uh, talents can go everywhere and anywhere, uh, to and from your faction treasury, to and from other players, should you uh, have some sort of agreement going. Um, if you uh, are not happy with the security arrangements for your current faction treasury under your movable chest, don't forget you can still bank with me uh, by using your chest and dragging that coin and money set down to your zone in the bank and I will record that off the sheet. Um, um, and if you are unsure about how much you already have banked with me, be sure to give me a call out and I'll let you know what you have. Through private messaging, of course. Slash, forward slash W space GM space your message in the, in the chat window. All right, we'll let all the uh, um, factions now just redistribute the coinage. So just make sure your money is either on the card or immediately next to the senator's card, just to make it obvious as to where that money is sitting. All right, or... I can't put the, uh, can't put the money in my chest. It won't go under. Okay, let me fix that. Uh, okay, now it'll go under. Same with mine. Okay. Yeah, I've got one too. Okay, coming to... Um, all right, that's fixed. Anybody else having uh, faction chest issues? Yeah, me. Uh, I just fixed yours. Oh, thanks. Yep. Uh, I'll just. I think the optimates are fine. Yep. And yeah. I'll just make sure the Reapers party is fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So, um, just as a um, point of information, if there were someone who had previously been Roman consul with a military of five, and the ability to halve enemy losses, would he be? able to be Roman Consul again given he wasn't last turn? So if they are not oh, sorry, currently if they're not currently consul, then they can be elected consul in, in the coming Senate phase. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a law that changes that later on, uh, should you decide to implement that if that comes up. Okay. Alright. Uh, Alright, so is everybody happy that they've done their redistribution? Uh, yes. Good. Okay, let's let's move on. There's no provinces to develop. Let's talk about state revenues. Uh, let's start, uh, Quaister, with the 100 talents to the state treasury, please. And, as we successfully drew last round, we have also received the event in the sandpit right now, which is Allied Enthusiasm. So, Quaister, if you want to add a further 50 talents to the state treasury. So, for a total of 150 talents. And then I'll um, now uh, remove that from the field now that we've played that. Don't know what the allies were enthusiastic about the way they've been going. <laughs> Somebody must have given a rousing speech at some point. <laughs> Great. Uh, now that's all the state revenue because we have no provinces uh, giving us any additional income. Okay, let's talk about contributions. Is there anybody uh, starting with the highest ranking available so officer? So that's uh, you, Rome, console. Uh, that wish to make um, donations to the state treasury with the minimum amounts offering up influence. So let's start with you there, uh, Sempronius. Any any state donations today? That's not games, is it? No, that's not games. This is purely money from a personal treasury to the state treasury. Um, and what's the minimum you've got to give to... Uh, so, um, I mean, you can give anything you like, but at certain levels or milestones, you get influence. So, at starting at 10 talents, you can actually gain one influence. At 25, you yeah. gain three influence, etc., etc. Um, no, I'm good. You're good? Okay. Uh, Hand of God Faction and Posthumous Awem, anything from you? Uh, no. Okay. Optimates, anything from you guys? Uh, no. Okay. Reaper's Party, anything from you guys? No. 
And finally, Taquinius Proprietor, anything from you guys? No. Okay, uh, great. Uh, no uh, additional uh, contributions there. Let's talk about debts. Um, so we have quite a few uh, units uh, out in force at the moment, currently sitting with uh, Julius. So you'll notice I've moved some things around now. So based on the last news report I posted to the group for you all, uh, to keep things simple, we now place the military force with the Senator in the play area. Um, and as you can see, if you look over to the Reapers party now under Julius, uh, you will see all the units there. Uh, so go ahead, uh, let's go and calculate the debt that we need to pay right now for all the units, both land and naval, at two talents each. And uh, let's find out what that is. So somebody want to count that up? 32. 32. Let's go ahead and deduct that from the uh, state treasury. And we also need to talk about the minus 20 talents for each active and unprosecuted war. And we see there are two. So that's a further minus 40 talent deduction. Shit. Uh, and we also have a land bill to take care of. That's a further minus 10 talents with the land three land bill still in effect. Um, so that's quite a few debts there. We got any money left? Not much. I thought we had a card that we got 50 at the start of this. You did, and right? that was accounted for. That yeah. is correct. Ah, yep. okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah, but it's 100 at the beginning of the turn, and we've got 98, so... <laughs> 98 talents. Uh, yeah, looking looking a bit light on there in the, uh, the the Temple of Jupiter, I believe. Is that where they used to keep their money? Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. So uh, I think that's all the debts we need to take care of. There's no local force to talk about, and there's nothing to do with governors. Okay. Great. Sorry, holding. Why is the land, what's the land bill? So remember, you would recall to help reduce your unrest level down. I think it was in the second session, or may have been the no, it was the second session. I think uh, you guys decided to implement a land bill, which helped to reduce yes. the unrest level. But the the I guess the issue with the land bill is that it will continue to cost the Senate each year until it is removed. But we do. And we so you simply, it's a proposal. You, you vote to remove it, uh, noting that a sponsor and co-sponsor need to make a popularity deduction and your unrest level will increase by the exact amount that it decreased when you first implemented it. Fine, so it's not, so it's not minus three each turn, it's minus three full stop, yep. It's only minus three on the initial implementation and after that you're just paying a cost, right? Yep. So it can be withdrawn, um, you'll just reinstate the unrest level that was, uh, was removed when you implemented it. Okay, and then of course it's an unpopular motion to remove a land bill, so uh, whoever the sponsor and co-sponsor are will take a popularity hit too. Okay, but if it's saving your dollars, it may be something to think about. Okay, uh, okay, let's let's do our our favourite, uh, and the, perhaps the nervous part is uh, is the uh, forum phase passage of time. Let's just double check. There's no um, weird events or anything we need to get rid of. Uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. The refuge card will stay there in effect until such time as that has been implemented with the death of the hero. Uh, let's start with the highest ranking available officer, starting with the 2d6 to check for that lucky number 7. Uh, so go ahead there, Sempronius, rolls the 2d6 and let's see what you get. Uh, and it is a seven, so we are in fact going to have an event for our first draw. <laughs> Perhaps uh, maybe a sigh of relief, uh, or maybe not. We will we will see. Go ahead and roll a 3d6 now, and let's compare that on the random events table. So, sorry, what am I doing now? Uh, rolling 3d6. Is there anything to do with are there any modifiers because of unrest or? Uh, no, nope, no, nope. it's just a, it's a, uh, at least from what I'm reading, it should be a straight 3d6 roll, uh, and you've rolled a 12 in this case. Oh, and, no. And 12 is our all, all too favourite manpower <laughs> shortage. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. Um, so, what have we just. Ah, <laughs> uh, you just can't help but laugh. <laughs> laugh to cover the pain. <laughs> we are uh, screwed. Uh, let's let's uh, just double check. There isn't a manpower shortage uh, event that actually instates something different. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look here. Uh, no, that's internal disorder. Uh, no, that's the trial. Um, no, I think I think it's as, as we read it. I'm just double checking. No, that's fine. I'm not 100% familiar with all the event cards. Uh, what about this one? Nah, that's fine. Or is it this one? Okay, no, nah, I think it's just a straight old, good old fashioned uh, manpower shortage. Yep, alright, so let's grab that token. Yeah, you guys know what this means. It means that uh, 
It's going to cost you double now for your units. Now going to be 20 talents uh, for the cost of fleets and legions. And so that's there in the forum area to remind you of that dread. Okay, let's go ahead and finish off the the initiative uh, for our high ranking available officer. Would you like to make a persuasion attempt? Sempronius. No. All right. Uh, you are definitely going to roll for a knight. Which senator is going to be attempting that today? Um, it will be um, Cornelius. It will be Cornelius. Any money to the cause? Um, three talents. Three talents, okay, um, from his personal treasury. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll take that five and I'll give you some change. Go ahead and roll your one d six. Oh, just misses out. Uh, so I'll get you your change at the very least uh, as a consolation prize. <laughs> Maybe I should do nothing for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, sorry, his money's just under Flaminus there. Your your change yeah. from the fiver. Uh, okay. Would you like to change faction leader? No, thank you. Uh, would you like to sponsor any games today? Um. Yes, I will do a slice and dice. A slice yeah. and dice, and we'll zoom in on the table there. A slice and dice is worth seven, which will give you a plus one in popularity. Um, so who's doing the slice and dice today? Cornelius. Cornelius again. Uh, I'll take that seven away. Go ahead and grab your... I'll grab the one for you if you like and make that easy. Um, uh, uh, you've already got four. three, you'll need a four. Okay, actually, yeah. um, Indominus, I think you've got a spare four. Do you mind parting that to Sempronius? He's not there at the moment. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, if you look at just above some um, Indominus's area, there's a couple of numbers there for you, Sempronius, if you want to sneak yeah. one, uh, a four from him and put the three back in that pile, perhaps. Okay, you've paid the seven. Uh, there's no unrest level to drop at the moment, I don't think. That's uh, zero. Okay, uh, great. Uh, and that will um, conclude uh, your initiative. All right, so let's rotate round as, as we do uh, to the Hand of God faction and Posthumus Awem. Uh, go ahead and roll your 2d6 and let's see what you get. He rolls an eight. All right, please draw the top single card from the early Republic deck and we'll do our... Um, Card check if it's red or black. Uh, oh, where'd it go? Above your camera. Oh, God. It's black. All right. Uh, it's black, so... Uh, so if, it. if it's black, yep, please drop it in the sandpit. And... <laughs> oh, how lovely. <laughs> that's, uh, that's most unfortunate. Okay, so what he's just drawn there, folks, is, in fact, the second Punic War. Uh, Jack Black may go Yeah, um, so that immediately is also going to uh, um, uh, it should, from what I understand, pop into the active wars. But what we're going to check is uh, just double check when they, an active war is drawn. It may go to imminent. Uh, so here's a test for you all now to dive into your instructions uh, and look up matching wars. Uh, so if you've got a, perhaps a copy open, and I'll bring them up on the screen here. Control F, uh, matching wars. Um, and, uh, and does that go to the imminent war zone uh, or the active wars? Okay. All right, so I'll start my search back up the, at the top here because we want to make sure this is correct because this could affect the outcome. Here we go. So it's rule 1.07.332. Whenever two wars of the same type are active, the land and fleet strength are each doubled as long as the two remain active. Um, so, sorry, so is, it an acti is it active there? Correct. So we now need to work this out. Um, <laughs> so... Now, actually, the card itself, uh, it is... It's. I mean, it's got the active war icon on it as well, but let's just continue to read up on that, on that matching war element there. Okay, so whenever a war, so look at the next rule on imminent wars. Whenever a war card is drawn from the deck that would match another war or revolt of a card already located anywhere in the forum, the drawn card is placed in the imminent war section. All right, so you guys got a little bit of relief. Woo! All right, so let's drag the second Punic Wars into imminent wars, sitting there in the pile. 
Um, so right now, the, the Punic War as it stands is still worth, as you read, with Hamilcar's bonus. But once uh, next year comes around, the second Punic War can, becomes an active war, and it doubles the war strength of each of the wars independently. So the first Punic War will now be worth 20 in land strength, plus 3 of Hamilcar. All right, so it becomes a land strength 23 war, and I guess same for the naval combat, okay? So that's uh, a fairly strong war. But once you defeat the first Punic War, the second Punic War drops back to a strength of 15, okay? Um, all right, so that's sitting in the imminent war section. All right, let's finish off your uh, initiative. So would you like to make a persuasion attempt this evening? Ah, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> me. Um... <laughs> Uh, yes, I would like to make a persuasion. All right. Attempt. Who uh, is your target such, senator? I would, uh, well, first of all, I would like to play this, if possible. Let's uh, have a gander at the card that you are playing from your hand. It is called Seduction, and I'm going to read this out for the benefit hmm. of everybody. For your persuasion oh. attempt on your initiative, make an unopposed persuasion attempt against a non-faction leader senator of your Whoa. choice. So oh. anybody that has a little yellow icon on their card is safe. Everyone else is up for grabs. No talents may be spent to defend against your only persuasion attempt. This initiative, talents already on the target still count uh, and is a playable immediately before announcing your target. So, well played. We will be implementing the seduction card. Uh, let's announce who your target is. Uh, you know what? I might go for our Fulvius down at uh, Optimates. Okay. As we're seeing our first inter interfactional challenge. Fulvius, mm. age six, a prior console with popularity two. I notice uh, you need to update that popularity two. It's the wrong token. It just needs to be a grey one. That's the knight's token you're looking at there. So uh, perhaps while we're doing some initial calculations, um, uh, Cornelius Calum can change the popularity two out for a grey number two. But he has 14 influence and two knights. So this will be <coughs> uh, an interesting uh, uh, an interesting bout. Now, when, when can I pay my, my bribe? Okay, pay so pay it straight on to... Or just put it next to Fulvius's card for the moment. Because um, yes. that will come in. So uh, let's bring up and open our persuasion uh, cheat sheets for the... Uh, and we can look upon the uh, equation to make things uh, nice and easy. There we go. Okay, so uh, who is your senator? So that's obviously come from personal uh, treasury. So it's coming from Tarentius. All right, and yep. what is his oratory rating? Uh, one. He has an oratory rating of one. What's his influence? Uh, Eleven. It is 11. Okay, and you're adding some bribes. Uh, how many bribes have you d dumped on him there? Uh, ten. Ten. All right, so that Oof. is for a total of 22, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Right, so that's a total of 22. Let's work out some stats from the other senator. Okay, so his loyalty is 8, plus he's a line rating of 7, which is a total of 15 so far. Uh, and he has no money on him, and uh, there are going to be no counter bribes. Okay, so what is 22 minus 15? 7. Seven, that's not a bad base number. All right, you need to roll equal to or less than seven now Oof. to uh, gain Fulvius as a senator to your faction. Go ahead and roll your... Uh, is it 2d6, sorry? Two, uh, yeah, 2d6, right? 2d6, all right, let's go. Equal to or less than seven. Oh, he gets it. <laughs> he, he gets it. Oh. Right. So I'm going to make this easy. I'll do the dragging so fickle, nothing's, nothing's left fickle, behind. Fickle, fickle, Fulvius. Oh, it's, it's, it's on now. There you go. That should be in your section there now. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I've dragged it on your chest. That's no, terrible. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, but you should, be able to yeah. you should be able to fix oh, that up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he is pretty old, though, so you better... Um... That's all right. Um, yeah, wow. Great uh, great persuasion attempt. That's that's how you do it, folks. Uh, while he's so fixing that up... Oh, yeah. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so the money, the bribes stay with that senator. So uh, um, you can't redistribute his bribes. They must stay with that senator now because um, we're beyond the redistribution step. Uh, now, who will be rolling for a knight today? Uh, can I roll with two characters or only one? Uh, only one can make a persuasion attempt. Uh, okay, uh, Sulpicius will roll, please. Sulpicius is going to have a roll. Is he going to be putting any money uh, for the cause? Yeah, he's going to put five. All so oh, right, so that's that's, that's that's automatic. Uh, I'll I'll take that. And I'll bring a knight up for you yeah, while yeah. you adjust yourself yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, so I'll take there. the five. Uh, I need a two for knights. You'll please. need a two, all right? And you'll drop the one out there, and I'll. There you go. There's the two. I'll take the one away. Make things a little bit better. 
All right, put the one back. I'll take the five back to the bank. All right, very good. Uh, would you like to change your faction leader? Um, just give me one second. Yep, take your time. Uh, no, that's all right. So all right, and uh, any sponsoring of games today? Uh, yes, I would like to pay for a uh, blood fest, please. A blood fest, and we see that a blood fest is worth thirteen, which will give you a popularity of two for Solpicious. So he's going to go from a popularity of yep. two to four. I'll grab that four for you if you like, uh, and I'll take that two yep, from you. you. There we go, um, and I'll take that thirteen away as well. All right, mm -hmm. and I'll uh, distribute yep. that amongst my funds here. Uh, now, do I add the 14 influence to my total as well? Um, uh, yeah, oh. that's right. So, yeah, while, while, when you finish your initiative, go ahead and update both your faction votes and your faction influence. That's correct. Okay, and uh, you can do that uh, at the conclusion of your, each of your initiatives as you go through. All right, uh, let's go on to the optimates. Uh, optimates, let's start by rolling your 2d6 and let's see what you get. Do you get a 7? All right. I uh, reduced the uh, faction. Uh, it's a nine. Go ahead and draw the single top card from the early Republic deck. Take that into your hand and do your usual red or black text check. And let us know what it is. Is it uh, red or black text? Oh, God. What? It's a black. All right. <laughs> Please dump it into the forum. Uh, yeah. And he flips it over, and it is a... It is a The first war. Gallic War. Another war. Now, this is a war <laughs> that we haven't seen yet. This is, in fact, the first of three. Um, and a victory in this uh, war creates the province of Gallia Cisalpina, or Pina, depending on how you'd like to pronounce that. Uh, it's worth a good 20 talents to you if you defeat it. Uh, land strength of 10, no naval battle required. Uh, and some danger numbers of 13 and 15 there. Now, you can see the armaments icon underneath Gaelic or Gaelic Wars there. That means it is immediately an active war. Okay? Oh. So you now have two active wars right now. Oh, so, um, yeah, this is a tough time. Ooh, you, you, have, you have hit the pinnacle of the uh, early Republic right now. It is, it is on. This is make or break. <laughs> Uh, your your coming decisions will determine whether you live or die. So <laughs> this is uh, this is tense. Uh, what are we in the fourth round? <laughs> uh, all right, let's finish off the Optimates uh, initiative here. Will you be making a persuasion attempt today? Um, I will not. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, and who's going to be rolling for a night? Uh, it is um, what's his name again? Fabius. Fabius Maximus is going to roll for a night. Any money to the cause? Uh, oh, sorry, no, wrong way around. Sorry, um, Papirius. Sure. Um, okay. Will uh, roll for a night. Sorry. And is he putting any money forwards for that? Uh, yes, he's putting four, please. He's putting four. So roll anything but a one, essentially, is what I'm hearing. If you just want to drop that below his yeah. card, and I'll take that away. Go ahead and roll your one d six. Yeah, you got it. Ah, you didn't really need money at all. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'll take the money. Uh, he needs a one. I'll grab you that one, and I'll drag it onto your card for you. There Thank you go. You. I'll take those funds away. Uh, would you like to change your faction leader? Uh, no. Uh, sponsoring any games today? Uh, yes. Can Fabius sponsor a, um, a little slice and dice? A slice and dice for a cost of seven. That'll give you a popularity of one. I'll grab that popularity one for you now. Um, Thank you. I'll drag that up to the card, and I'll take that funding. No unrest level to drop. Um... But at least you gain the popularity bonus. All right, and that concludes your initiative. Feel free to go and update your faction votes and influence. Let's move across to the Reapers Party. Reapers Party, roll your 2d6 there, Cornelius Dolabella, and let's see if you get a 7 or not 7. 2d6. 2d6, that's it. He rolls an 11. Please draw the top single card from the early Republic deck. Take that yep. into your hand. Draw a one. I think you need to type a one into the box, do you? Draw a one. Oh. All right, it's in your hand, so look above your camera to open up your cards again uh, and have a look at that new card that you've got and tell us if it's red text or black text. Uh, hang on. You should be able to click on it, I think, to zoom in, I think, if you need to do that. Oh, yes. 
Uh, which is the new one? Oh, I think it's red. You think or you know? Let, let me have a gander. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have a gander. I think right. it's red. Let's it's have a red. let's have a squeeze. Um, Yep, I'm looking now. You've got all red cards, so you're you're safe to keep all yes. of those. They're all for you. All right. Would you like to make a persuasion attempt today? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. And who will be rolling for a night? Uh, does oratory or what something help on that? Uh, no, it is money, 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 money. from a personal uh, treasury. Uh, well, in that case, uh, Julius will Ju be rolling. Julius, uh, any money that you'd like to put forward from Julius's purse? Yeah, he's five talents. Five, that's that's an automatic win, so I'll grab you uh, oh, okay. another knight, so you'll need a two now, and I'll take the one away, and I'll put the two in place. Oh, I don't want to move that, I actually want to move that. There we go, and I'll take the five talents, all right. Uh, would you like to change faction leader? Uh, no. Uh, and would you like to sponsor any games today? I don't think you uh, can. Can't really afford it. <laughs> no, can't can't afford it. All right, uh, that's that's all right. Uh, all right, and that concludes your turn. If you want to do a check for your faction votes and faction influence, uh, and let's move on to the Taquinis uh, program. Well, what what the, would they have changed? Uh, yes, your faction votes would have increased by one thanks to the knight. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, uh, Taquinis Pro Praetor and Indominus, uh, roll your two d six. Let's see what you get. Uh, he gets a six. Please draw that top single card from the early Republic deck. Uh, so it's oratory plus knights for your faction votes, everyone. Oratory plus knights for your faction votes. Uh, while we wait for Indominus to have a check of that card, if it's red text or black text. Uh, we can't hear you, Indominus. Uh, I think you've muted yourself. Just click your unmute button on your camera window there. There we go. Black text. Black text, please dump it into the sand pit. Let's take a gander. Another war card. <laughs> Not a war card. And it oh. is it is a Fabius. Now, that card that you've in fact drawn is a two. Uh, and that immediately goes under the family card, under the, the known, well-known statesman that exists already in play. So we're going to take that family card. And we're going to go dump to the back. And it's going to sit underneath the Optimates. There we go. So he, in fact, uh, takes up residence uh, underneath. Uh, it doesn't count for anything. It just shows the affiliation with the uh, the well-known statesman that already exists in play. Okay. All right. Let's finish off your initiative. Um, would you like to make a persuasion attempt today? No. Uh, okay. Who's going to be rolling for knights? Uh, Manlius. Manlius is going to be rolling for knights. Any money to the cause? One. All right. Roll us uh, a five or a six. That's Uh, he, he rolls a two, no no luck there. Uh, any change of faction leader? No. All right, and um, uh, would you like to sponsor games today? No. All right, that concludes your turn. All right, and then that takes us all the way back to the beginning. So now, starting uh, with the highest ranking uh, available officer, um, uh, we are going to bid on that final and last initiative. So all those same steps again. All right, and let's ask Sempronius. Uh, are you donating any money uh, for, its, uh, for the privilege of the 6th initiative? No. Okay, so the, the bid is still um, uh, still open. So hand of God? One, uh, yeah, one, I'll one, five. One, oh, he's going to spend a full five. All right, there we go. All right, um, Optimates, uh, you need six talents or more to play. Um, I pass. All right, Reaper's Party, six or more talents to play. Uh I'll pass, but I've got a problem. I'm trying to move the nine up to my um, faction votes. Oh, uh, but the chest is in the way. The there you point. go. Yeah. I fixed it for you. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Uh, and then finally, um, Indominus, any uh, six or more to play? Uh, six it is. Oh, here we go. All right. You've thrown it in there. Perfect. All right. Um, just back to the highest rank available officer. Um, well, I'll just put it out there. Anybody else want to put um, uh, seven or more? Or uh, you've, you've put in, yeah, seven or more to play. Anyone else? No? Going once, going twice. All right, sold. All right, go ahead and roll that 2d6 there, Indominus. Uh, get to seven. Oh, it's going to be an event. All right, let's roll that lucky 3d6. Let's hope for something better. He rolls a 10. Looking at the random events table here, it is... <laughs> 
Ah, you're gonna love this. Storm <laughs> SP, right? No, it's Evil Omens. Oh, God. Evil Omens. Uh, of course it is. And, and guess who needs to be really, really worried about this one? Pontifex uh, Maximus. The Pontifex oh, Maximus. <laughs> The Pontifex Maximus is in the poo. All right. <laughs> I'm going to drag out the event card, and uh, I'm going to read this out to everybody so everybody knows. Okay. First of all, and this is a f the first job for the Quaestor, the State Treasury must immediately pay 20 talents for oh, sacrifices okay. and temple repair. And now, everybody, there is a minus one penalty applied to every die or dice roll uh, from, from now on, except for initiative and further rolls in the events table. Um, and there's some rules behind persuasion attempts. Uh, in the case of provincial spoils and stating and blah, 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 blah. Okay, but then we need to go have a look at the Pontifex Maximus advance rule and, and, and read out the delights that he has. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so I'm now looking over at the rules, getting towards the Pontifex Maximus section, which is, I think, towards the start of the advanced part of the rules. There it is. Are you going to cross? Um, uh, if you like, I can move everybody's view. Is everybody happy for me to do that? Nobody's, yeah. Yeah. nobody's moving anything right now? Okay, I'm going to change everybody's view. Uh, hopefully that's changed now. Let's have a read. When the Evil Omens event is drawn, the Pontifus oh. Maximus must pay the 20... Oh, the, the Pontifus Maximus must pay the 20 talent cost. So hold off on pulling that from the State Treasury. He has to come from the Personal Treasury. All right, now I probably can't yeah. do that. If you cannot no. pay the 20 talents... Or if a second evil omen is drawn, right? He immediately is stripped of his uh, and gets a major marker. So let's work that out. Do you have 20 talents in your personal treasury, Pontifus Maximus? I do not. Okay, so go ahead and drop the Pontifus Maximus purple token and name plaque into the sand pit for us. Oh. Okay, and go grab yourself a major marker and plonk that on your card. The shame. This has not been good for the Optimus this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's not been good for Rome, my friends. <laughs> Well, you're not there yet. <laughs> and while you're at it, you'll also lose your five influence. Um, my four influence, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, to, to a minimum of zero. So if you've only got four, it goes to zero. Uh, let us know when you've done oh, those. No, that was the card. <laughs> so that means his party influence drops as well? It will, yep. yes. Wow. Wow, it's all doom and gloom, isn't it? It is. All right, so re recapping, he's unable to pay the 20 talents. So have we re refixed the state treasury for the moment? Not yet, not yet. Yeah, right, because uh, you probably read ahead that uh, there may still be some percussions there. Uh, all right, so he's lost both the, the purple Pontifus Maximus token and the name plaque, which has gone back to the middle sandpit. He now has a major marker. He's lost five or four influence down to zero. Now, uh, he's not able to pay the full omens cost. The difference plus a 10 talent fine is levied on the faction treasury. So we're now talking, so is there any money on this Pontifus Maximus right now? There's four. All right, so drop whatever talents you have into the sand pit right now. So there's four. So um, we've gone from 20 down to 16 plus a 10 talent fine. So we've gone from 16 back to uh, 26 talents, if uh, my maths is correct. Um, when you say we, do you mean like the Roman treasury? Uh, no, no, this is just his faction treasury right now. So oh, yeah. your faction treasury now has to pay 26 talents. Uh, can your faction treasury pay that? Uh, no, it can pay three talents. It can pay three talents. So go ahead and dump three talents into the sand pit. You're going to lose all that money from your faction treasury. Uh, so that means uh, 26, 25, 24, 23 talents are still left over. Um, oh, shit. Now... Um, <laughs> The faction leader is uh, may also be the subject of a major prosecution during the following Senate phase. So go give your faction leader a major marker. Uh, he was the Pontifex Maximus. Oh, so okay, so hit. that's fine. There's no no further issues there. Um, uh, now that is actually put a second major marker on him because that is in addition to the regular <laughs> prosecutions. Um, just to make that obvious. Now the state must pay the shortfall. So it's a total of 23 talents from the state treasury now. Oh, so there was a 10 talent fine levied because he couldn't pay it. So why does the state pick up his personal fine? Yeah, where does the money go? So all the money goes to the bank, right? It goes to the temple because it goes they to the to... temple. He's got to, yeah, he's got to pay for the temple. He's got to pay for all the, the temple, temple repairs okay. and yeah. sacrifices, right? So all that money is gone. <sighs> so I'm gonna... Well, that was a good card. 
<laughs> it was, wasn't it? Um, whoa, 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 whoa. The 10 talent fine is levied on his faction treasury. Yes, correct, and he couldn't pay it. So why does the Senate pick up that bill? Somebody has to pay it. Oh, sorry, I thought you said this, um, it came out of state treasury. Eventually it did, but he couldn't pay it. So he paid all he had, and the leftover was paid by the state. Is that, is that right? You understand that now? Where's the I think it's, it's more the 10... The... 10, um, the 10, the 10 the fine, it doesn't make sense. But they are the rules. No, where does it say that the state has to pay any personal fine that it cannot pay? No, 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 so, right, so he couldn't pay the initial 20 talents, so it was levied on his faction treasury plus a 10 talent fine. His faction treasury could only pay three, so based on his personal treasury that he paid, what his faction treasury paid, the leftover amount was 23. That 23 still enough me to be paid, and therefore it comes out of the state treasury. But you think it does, paid with it does say at the end the, the state must pay any shortfall in the Correct. evil omens cost, right. and I'm excluding the faction fine. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, then it'll only be 13, right? Thank you. Oh, well, that's much better. Well, at least army or navy. That's much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So the quest is uh, is going to fix that for us now. Good, good reading, folks. That's what I like to see. Uh, what happened to our, is that Pontifex Maximus uh, purple token go back? Did it? Where's it's that gone? The, it's in the sand pit. Uh, I can't see it. Owen, oh, it's a field console. Is in the sand pit. Yeah, I've got the name Clark. <laughs> but what, what, what happened to the Pontifex Maximus? To oh, he's still got it. I've got it now. <coughs> Why is the field console in the? In the uh, it's it's ready for a vote because he became a pro console at the end of the last turn. Isn't he still out? A battle though? Isn't he still out there? He's still there? out there, but he's a pro console. He's no longer a field console. He's a pro right. console. Yep. Okay, I think we've dealt with that mess now. Let's finish your initiative. Uh, any persuasion attempts, sir? Uh, um, That's me. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, who am I persuading? Um... <laughs> um Yeah, let's go for... No. Um, yeah, let's go for Emilius. All right, he's going to give Emilius a whirl. Uh, who is the senator giving it a red-hot crack? Uh, Cato the Elder. Cato the Elder. All right, let's go through the sums. What's his oratory? Three. Uh, it is, uh, it's one. Okay, what's his influence? Nine. Nine for a current total of ten. Um... And let's just, uh, before we start talking bribes, let's talk about our target senator. His current um, loyalty rating is eight. How many talents does he have on his card right now? Four. Four. So he's currently got a total of 12. So you currently got a base number of minus two right now. Any bribes? Hang on, how come it's minus two? Then uh, I have 15. Sorry, uh, so you got eight loyalty plus four talents, which is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You've currently got a, a base number of 10. 10 minus 12 is minus 2. Is that correct? <clears throat> Sorry, I thought my oratory plus my influence was my base number. Uh, yeah, your oratory for, is Cato the Elder, correct? Yes, yeah, 6 yeah. plus 9, so it's 15. Sorry, I, I, I misread your oratory. It is, in fact, 6, not 1, as, as what I was reading there. So, uh, <laughs> right, so that is 9 uh, of your influence plus your 6, which gives us a total of, uh, that's 15. Did I do my math right there? Yeah. Minus uh, the 12, right, which is a current base number of 3. That's better. That's a little bit more favourable. Yeah. Okay, uh, now will you be making any bribes? Yes, I'll put in 4. Uh, just put those below Amelius's card for the moment, if you don't mind. Um, this will make it separate just so, we, so we can see that. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now the new base number is 7. Okay. Um, and let's just open it up, uh, quickly dart around the room to see if there's any counter bribes coming from faction treasuries only. Uh, let's go across to uh, some, uh, Sempronius. Any counter bribes from your faction treasury? No. Okay, any hand of God, any counter bribes? No. Uh, Optimates, any counter bribes? No treasury. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Reaper's Party, <laughs> any, any counter bribes? Uh, no. All right, it is unopposed. Okay, go ahead and roll your 2d6, 7 or less. Oh. Gets a nine. Uh, that was in the bag. All right, so Amelius inherits yet more money, uh, and we'll, we'll sit there. <laughs> he's he's a rich, unaligned independent. Uh, love it. Uh, will you uh, actually? Was there? Oh no, the, that evil omen doesn't un, in, doesn't affect one of those roles, does it? Uh, uh, let's just double check. Does it affect persuasion? Let's zoom in. 
Uh, it's a plus one to all persuasion attempts. <laughs> so, uh, if anything, he rolled a ten. I need a plus two. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, if anything more unfavourable. But right, good pick up. I'm <laughs> ex Pontifus Maximus. How long did that evil oak sit there for? Uh, just for the duration of this turn. Okay. Got for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have, have Plautius roll for a night. Yep, certainly. Uh, go ahead and roll your five or a six. He's paying one. Yep. Yep. Gets a three, unlucky, um, and I think that the roll would have been affected by the, the omen anyway, I think. Um, would you like to change faction leader? No. Nope. Uh, sponsoring any games? No. Nope. Great, all right. That finishes off a very colourful set of initiatives. Woo-wee! All right, let's put Rome in order. All senators holding a major office will now get a major marker, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are a Rome console, a field console... Please add a major marker. I'll grab one for Julius, even though he's currently away right now. Um, uh, the, the sensor's got to grab one for himself. Uh, Rome console's got to grab one for himself. So do we, go, we don't have a pro console at the moment. Yeah, you, you, Julius is a pro console. But he was the field console. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, you, you essentially you are now a pro console in this in this phase uh, due to still being out in the field. When you're voted out, that's essentially when it occurs. But we've just done it a little bit earlier here. Okay. Okay. But yeah, you are all for in suit or intensive purpose you with a field console. Uh, so let's do a double check. Uh, Elias has got lots of corruption. Good. Uh, the sensor uh, Fabius Maximus from Optimus still needs a major marker. Yep. Yep. Uh, Furious has got his. Yep. Um, uh, you can you can probably yeah, hang on to your Rome console ones just for the moment because you still got a job to do in the next coming steps there, uh, Sempronius. I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now with the Second Punic War uh, active, the highest ranking available officer needs to see if there's any taxes. Tax farm is destroyed, so let's have a read. Oh, it's not active right now, it's imminent. So uh, I think we escaped that just for the moment, but coming in the next turn, on a roll of 1d6, whatever tax farm concession matches that roll gets destroyed. Um, but thankfully it's only imminent right now, so we, we dodged that bullet. Uh, what else do we need to look about here? Okay, <clears throat> no enemy leaders or concessions to deal with, and that puts Rome in order. Okay, now let's just double check everybody's concessions are revealed, except shipbuilding, that's fine. All the tax farmers are revealed. Okay, Furious has his corruption. <coughs> Platius has his Egyptian grain open. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, everybody's looking good. All right, please, everybody, just do a 100% check of your faction votes in particular now. Uh, oratory plus knights, add them all up. Just make sure your faction votes are correct and make sure they're accurately reflected on the centre vote tally in the centre upper middle. Just everybody check your votes does now. The, <clears throat> so does, there's a uh, shipbuilding um, concession in the Hand of God's I thought some money went in last turn against that one, so shouldn't that one be exposing the corruption? Uh, yeah, that should still be exposed because of the fleet's purchase last round. Uh, yeah. We'll change that in just a second. Yep, uh, so make sure that is exposed because uh, he certainly earned a lot of money from oh. that, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> good, good pick up there, ex Potiphar Maximus. I'm a war buddy. <laughs> He's got a grudge against me. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. A quick question when do we get to distribute concessions? When do you get to the what concessions? Distribute concessions. Dis, uh, when, you, when you say distribute concessions, how do you mean? So, well, other if you had one in a card, when do you get to give it to a senator? Uh, so if you have concessions in your hand, you get to play those in the revolution phase at the end of the end of the turn. Oh, right, right at the end. Right, yeah, because okay. uh, you'll recall from the rule, the new rule that we saw is that now once a concession is against the senator, it is stuck unless death or otherwise prosecuted, okay? Right. Uh, all right. Uh, Rome's now in order. Uh, just noting from here, we're going to move into the population phase. Uh, we've got one unprosecuted war right now. If the Quaestor could add plus one to our unrest level, please, due to the unprosecuted war there. Uh, we have no droughts, thankfully, so that's good. And uh, pretty soon we're going to hear a, uh, a speech uh, and then a 3d6 roll from our um, Highest ranking government officer, the Rome Consul, which will then uh, initiate the Senate phase. And then, of course, his first uh, and only proposal will be to uh, propose candidates for the new set of consuls. Uh, boy, do they have some decisions to make. Um, 
So uh, at this point of time, right, it is now over to uh, Furious in the Suidas da Panem faction. Uh, it is the floor is all yours. Well, um, I was going to say that the citizens uh, of Rome are happy. I'm um, rest level of one. That's not too bad. Um, the treasury uh, is not looking healthy, given the uh, wars we need to prosecute. Um, but we have um, Julius, who we sent off to prosecute the war against Amilcar um in, in the south in uh, in the punic wars uh which the gods didn't play in our favor and they continue to um to wreak havoc amongst us as now we've got unrest in the north with the gauls as well um i guess we wish julius better success next time around um and I think we should uh, prosecute those two wars and get them out of the way. Uh, the sooner, the better. Well, we've got no choice anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at this point, does anybody wish to nominate? Three D six. Oh, three D six. Yeah. Let's let's see how you did against the people first. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three. He's going to roll three d six now. Uh, he's got no popularity to add to the fun. He's oh. rolled twelve. Uh, minus one is eleven. Let's zoom in on our table here. Uh, would we minus one for the bad omens as well? Uh, right. So he's in fact uh, done one ten. slightly worse, which is ten. Therefore, he gets just plus one to the unrest level. That's all. That's not a bad speech. Um, so if the choirster wants to increase that one to a two, I'd say that's a pretty pretty good speech. That's not bad. For, despite everything going on, uh, there was only some mild disgruntlement. That's, it's that's it's okay. no Kate ODL. Though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, uh, yeah, look, I, I think you, uh, Furious has to be relatively happy with that. Okay, back to you, uh, back to you, Rome Console. Okay. Um, so, at this point, um, does anybody want to nominate any consoles for the next year? Um. Keeping in mind we should be... I, seeking people with high military um, to prosecute these wars. I was going to um, put Fabius uh, forward, uh, general, or my general with a military of five and the ability to halve losses. Uh, as a quick point of order as well, one of the key things I wanted to point out is the potential for an appointment of a dictator as well. So perhaps all of you need to keep that in mind um, when dis discussing, I guess, these candidates, and particularly for the current Rome Consul, who ultimately proposes those candidates. So, could you remind us what the what the advantage of a dictator is? Uh, so, the dictator gets to take a master of horse, which uh, essentially all that military ratings of both those senators gets added to the war total uh, of the Senate. Uh, so, it essentially means you get extra increased strength. Um, the dictator is appointed. Um, from any uh, aligned senator in Rome by the Roman field consul. So the Roman field consul just get to a point, there's no vote unless they disagree. Um, but the Roman field consul get to appoint uh, a dictator of their choice. And then the dictator will then take over and he gets to appoint a master of horse of his choice. So just take that into account, assuming the consuls do in fact decide to appoint a dictator. Um, just keep that in the back of your mind, uh, particularly for you, Rome consul, as you propose your candidates. Okay, so we've got one nomination for Fabius Maximus. Uh, I, I agree with that one. Okay. So one second, just to be clear. So if we were to appoint Fabius as field consul, would he also be able to be um, master of horses? We wouldn't, we wouldn't want him to because he halves all losses around that are in combat unless he's the master of horse. If they are a console, they cannot be a dictator or master of horse. That, oh, sorry, if they're a console, they cannot be a dictator. They cannot be a dictator or master of horse if they are a console. Okay. Um, and if, if there's doubts, by all means, look that up in the, in the rule component on, on no, no, dictators. No. So do we want to appoint a dictator to go and fight these wars? 
Uh, given that we're going to have to raise, now he ta they take their own uh, as dictator, and they get to take additional military force because what do we need to raise to fight the next battle? And it's um, cost of double. Well, that depends which war we're going to fight first. Yeah, we can fight the um, the Gallic War because uh, it only requires ten soldiers and zero fleets yeah we don't need any navy for that one uh yeah, we've navy. got we've, we've got, got enough soldiers yeah. straight up and we've got 11 at the moment uh yeah so he's got no leader so whatever whatever military whatever field console we get we'll add on top of that yes yeah. so 11 plus again yeah, if, well, if, if fabius becomes the the leader we 16. Yeah. So, yeah, so it'd be fabulous. Yeah. Can we afford to buy any more legion? Probably not. But what if he becomes the dictator? What does that mean? So then he can appoint a master of horse, and so then it's him plus. The master of horse. So it's got to be an aligned senator. So, by that, does that mean someone from the same faction has to be master of horse? Nope. Uh, an aligned no. senator means any senator in Rome that is a part of a faction. Okay. So, cool. I guess the opposite is a rebel. Okay. So, okay. Um, so is there is there anyone with the military of four? Uh, Cornelius of Sibibus has four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Has four as well. Cool. So that sounds like a, a good option, I guess. Is that what we want to do? I think we have to take any advantage we can. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and so, any. Uh, uh, what about the nomination for a Rome consul? Um, um, Nobody wants to be a right council? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's great power, oh, guys. Oh, you, you should always, always be looking for opportunities to get console. Can you go one step forward again if you want? Uh, Alias would like to restore his reputation after the uh, Pontifex Maximus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can trust him after this, Arvin. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you, I mean, from a strategy point of view, you guys should be leaping at the opportunity or trying to get into the current console's head to get your guy nominated, right? Because you get to control the dictator appointment, a uh, bit with with in consultation with the other console, <laughs> right? Uh, and plus, you're talking, you know, free influence and stuff here, right? And then um, potentially oh, opportunity to fight a war as well. Yeah. But Kato is not the type of person who likes to sort of, you know, look like he's desperate. So he's just hanging <laughs> back and then saying, yeah, I'll put my hand up. Kato will do another good job for you next year. So. I, I also need to remind you of the rules as well, that if your senator is an elder senator, i.e. seven or more years of age, they cannot leave Rome. So they can be appointed to any of those positions we've been talking about, dictator, master of horse, uh, Rome, field consul, except they cannot leave to fight a war. So it'd be the next highest ranking available officer who would go to war. Cato the Elder is elder in name only. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Dolabella hasn't had a Rome consul yet. <laughs> no, not yet. But he's been so, a couple of times. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Achilles, he's he could be the consul, but he couldn't leave Rome. He couldn't be the general or anything because he's that's old. Fine. That's fine. He's my faction leader. Uh, Valerius. No, hang on, no, he's not. Valerius is your faction leader. Um. So what? What is? What does a? What's the title we're going for here? Um. What uh, does he need? So what does, hang on, does just, he need good just, oratory or? Just, just to refresh, oh, okay. just to refresh here, right? The current Rome consul, which is furious which is under Sempronius's command, is currently looking to uh, propose two candidates for consoles. That's yeah. that's what's on the table right now. Yeah. Does, does, is high oratory good if you want to be a console? 
Yes. Does not come in. It does. Yes. On my highest oratory is Julius. Mm, that's good. Well, he's not eligible for console. Well, right, because he's a real console at the moment. Real console, yeah. Okay, so, all right, so. I'm going to propose it. Yep. Yeah. I'll propose Fabius Maximus and Flaminius for consoles. Fabius Maximus, right. Flaminius. Oh, yep. Yeah. Who's this Flaminius? Um, it's mine. So the Sibibus <laughs> Dapanem. I think it would be good to have someone with a higher oratory score. And he's got experience of major offices like um, Alias. I think Alias, to, to, is it corrupt or major? I thought they were major. They're, ma they're major, so it's it's not corruption, it's just um, a consequence of running large organizations within Rome. You just end up with these no, no, badges. Yeah, corruption. Yeah, that's corruption. <laughs> it's major corruption. That's right. It's major corruption. It says corruption on there, not major, that's all. On those. Oh, does it, oh, that was supposed to say major. I just went from the color, sorry. <clears throat> I think we need to go through a um, prosecution phase before I vote Alias in again, just to see if he's guilty or not. <laughs> uh, is, is that what the prosecution phase does? <laughs> oh, yes. In the name of the gods. <clears throat> Jupiter, or whoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that really only leaves K. Dot Yellow, doesn't it? According to that logic, nominations have been made, so we've got to vote for it, don't we? Correct. Oh, it's, it's up to the previous Rome console. That's right. So I made a I made a proposal. If we vote that, and if it's no, then we go around and choose yeah. uh, console uh, choose again. And so, just to be clear, if we wanted Fabius to be dictator, I thought the he can't be one of the consuls. Is that right? Or he can be one of the consuls? He cannot be one of the consuls if we want Fabius to be dictator. Yeah. Okay. So not, so, not sorry, holding so... a major office except for censor. So sorry, can you, Furious, can you repeat um, who you're proposing? Oh, no, I'm not proposing anybody. No, I've stuffed that up. So let's 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 go around the merry go round once more, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so who do we want for consuls? Who we propose? Cato? So we've got Kedo, we've got Alias. We've got, sorry, who are you proposing now there? Uh, Flaminus, or oh, Flaminius. Yeah, Flaminius. What's that, anyone else in the mix? Any, any other hats in the, sorry, who was? Any other hats in the ring? I think that was it. Okay, so we'll we'll throw it out there and then we'll we'll vote on the different combinations, I guess. Um, so let's start with Cato and Alias, and we'll start with Posthumus. Uh, I'll vote twelve in favour. Uh, and who's the scribe? Uh, I'm I'm the square. Okay, you're right. Okay, um, Indominus. Uh, Sixteen against. Okay. Um, Dolabella. Can I abstain? No. Nope. So you got either before or against. Correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll go four. Catch four. Four. How many? You need to state how nine, many. Nine four. Yep. Nine. Okay. We don't have a military leader, guys. Nine. Yeah, no, but if we propose a dictator, we we're proposing a dictator and master of horse. 
Yeah, but we have to elect the console first, and then right. that's fine. Yeah. Have you have you finished your round of voting there, Rome console? No, not yet. Dollar Bella, sorry, what was your vote? Nine, nine, in favour. Nine in favour. Um, Cornelius. Uh, twelve in favour. What is my count now? I can't remember. Yeah, twelve. And Cornelius, uh, sorry, the Cerebus da Panem is ten in favour. In favour, so that's 24, 34, 43, 4 against 16. Yep. So the comms dogs are now Cato and Aelius. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, if Sempronius, you want to pass on the Rome console, purple token and name plaque to the new Rome console. And field console, whoever, well, the consoles now need to side. So, yeah, too, yeah. But, but this is where we normally take our break, which is what we will now, in fact, do. So um, uh, feel, free, feel free to go grab yourselves a drink, have a leg stretch. Consoles, have a chat amongst yourselves about who's going to be who, um, which yeah. needs to occur. Um, and don't forget, One second. don't forget, I'd like the field console to uh, introduce the Rome console when that time comes. But uh, for everybody else watching the stream, uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be back in about five minutes, okay? Don't go away. Uh, from break, uh, hello, welcome back, uh, Twitch uh, audience, uh, if you're watching. Uh, right, so the consoles are now going to yep, discuss amongst themselves who's who. So uh, let discussions commence, and then I'd like to uh, see the field console introduce the Rome console as the lead console uh, before, we, before we step on. Interesting, wheeling and dealing. Uh, who's your counterpart who's not responding? Ah, uh, okay, yep, fair enough. Fair enough, that's okay. Happy with that. Um, and just for the records, while the consoles are having their discussions, uh, for Furious, I've just added your prior console marker there for your last term of office, okay? Um, Noting that those prior console markers is your indicator uh, for whoever the new Rome console is to uh, pick for sensor. Uh, well, not pick, but hold a proposal anyway. <laughs> right, lots of lots of discussions taking place. Uh, we don't have audio for the other. Thanks for that, uh, Unknown Star YT. Uh, the audio has been fixed now. There, there hasn't been much that's occurred so far. The audio has been restored. Uh, they're, they're just having some internal discussions right now to see uh, which console is going to be who. Uh, but thanks for letting us know. Appreciate that. That's good. Good save. Good save. Okay. Go on. Go for it, Alias. Uh, I, Alias, would like to propose that um, Cato the Elder um redoes his greatest hits for um Roman yeah. console. <laughs> I we accept. Okay. Please. Sounds sounds oh. like yep, we've got uh, agreement between the consoles then. Yes. All right. Uh if they want to take up their respective posts, they're in the sand pit. Don't forget to add your uh five influence. Uh, of course, the Rome Consul will also take the presiding magistrate name, Clark. So who's the field consul now? Alias. Oh. In um, Optimates. Oh. Uh, he is trying to redeem himself for his uh, evil omens. <laughs> well, so all the units that are under Julius, was it, do they now have to go... No, they stay, they remain with you unless uh, ordered otherwise. Okay. Yep. So uh, on any result other than a victory or defeat, uh, they will stay with the commander. But he's not the... Don't we have a new field constable? Uh, yes, you do, but that doesn't change who the commander is for that war. You are still deployed oh, okay. to that war until commanded by the Senate. Oh, okay. So you could be chosen to continue to fight the First Punic War or they might decide to replace you. 
Now, upon this disastrous year that we've had, uh, I have to make a grave uh, announcement. We need to vote for a new Pontifex Maximus. The last one has proven to be inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I will nominate um, Manlius of the Pro Rata, the Taquinius Protero uh, faction as the Pontifus Maximus. Mm. I don't like that. He's voting, voting for his. Uh... Jobs for the boys. <laughs> it does feel like jobs for the boys. Oh, for the boys yeah. Look, we need we need a strong hand to lead this country out of the troubles we're in at the moment. We can't have faction disputes happening right now. We really need to have leadership. We need to move forward. Um, and after these uh, times are over, we can then look back and uh, look at alternative options. I think um, it's not necessary to have a Pontifus Maximus. It's not something which is um, required for us to Well, we, we need to bring the population back under control. And I think that the best way to do that is to show strong political and religious leadership. I think uh, winning wars can sometimes be seen as a uh, strong political and um, spiritual leadership. And I will support you on that. <laughs> so, any, I, I'll take other nominations. Um, well, I kind of want to nominate a, a kind of a neutral party, I suppose. Um, obviously, we've got to vote on it, but uh, I wouldn't be upset with. Uh, I guess Cornelius of the Civibus party, he's already a priest. If uh, he could become the Pontifex Maximus, I think that's... He He can, uh, but he would lose his priest token there. Okay, well, maybe I'll, I'd say Fleminus then uh, from Civibus as well, just simply to have it as a neutral party uh, to ensure that the church and state, state are separated. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nothing against Fleminus, but he's getting old. He's getting on a bit, and... Uh... And he does swear a lot. <laughs> I, think, I think it's good to be led by wise old men who uh, you know, can point it in the right direction spiritually. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> first off, I will call for a vote for um, uh, Men Menlius. Can I have uh, votes from the Civibus party, please? Uh, so, so this is for Manlius to be the... Yeah, yeah, so just a quick point of order. If you're the presiding magistrate, be very clear and articulate. The proposal is this. Uh, uh, voting now commences. Uh, and then call on the factions to vote. All right, let's be very clear. One, for the benefit of the scribe who has to write all of this down, but two, so everybody knows what they're voting for. Because obviously discussion takes place beforehand, that's fine, and very strongly encouraged. Um, but when you go to uh, cement your proposal, presiding magistrate, make sure that that is in fact very clear. Okay. So sorry, as I described, this is called the jobs for the boys proposal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that was, I think we'll understand if you label like that what it was. The nominations have ended. We're now voting for Men Menlius as the Pontifus Maximus. We've recorded a Civibus to vote 10 votes against. Is that correct? That is correct. 10 against. Uh, hand of God? Uh, I will vote 12 votes against. Uh, Optimates? 12 against. And Reaper's Party? 9 votes against. And the Tarquinius Parate votes 16 in favour. Okay. Scribe, what's the so, result, please? Um, that would be 416 and against 43. So motion, motion does not pass. Okay, and what else happens right now? 
does he lose reputation or something? Uh, uh, it, it sounds like you're onto it there, uh, Posthumous Awem. Uh, care to read out that particular rule? You're on it. So you need to look up, um, I guess, under proposals in the Senate phase. It should be what you're looking for in there. I'll, I'll also look as well, see if I can find it. Resolution. Um, Population, Senate. And... There we go. I think he's over here. Uh, governor, dictator. So, for, for the benefit of uh, everybody, both on stream and, and above, what we've essentially just seen is a, um, a unanimous faction defeat of a proposal, which means the presiding magistrate now needs to make a decision. Uh, the presiding magistrate either needs to cop a loss of influence to retain his presiding magistrate post, or he hands off the presiding magistrate post to the next highest ranking available officer to take command of the session. So because each and every other faction all voted 100% against his faction, um, he now has to make this choice. So I guess let's ask that question, uh, but maybe we need to find out what that influence loss is as well. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick control F in the document over here. Um, we're looking for a defeat of a proposal. Uh, if I uh, ask everybody else to look for this as well, just to make sure we get this right. Uh, it might actually be under the, um, the, the title presiding magistrate, uh, presiding magistrate. So if we look at... Uh, we've got the loss of influence. Yeah, here we go. We might be getting closer. Um, Tribune. <coughs> okay, so rule 1.09.144. Whenever the presiding magistrate makes a proposal which is defeated by unanimous vote of all senators in Rome controlled by the other players, he may choose to lose one influence down to a minimum of zero, or he may step down as presiding magistrate and immediately hand over conduct of the meeting to the next highest ranking available officer. Uh, if he does not have influence to lose, he must step down. Uh, so, a choice to you, uh, Rome Consul. Uh, will you be copying a uh, loss of one influence, or will you be standing down? I will cop a loss of influence. Okay, I'll get you to update your minus one influence there on your own console, and then you will retain the chair. I have the chair with the grudge. <laughs> yes. And uh, as a tip as well for presiding magistrates, um, be more uh, perhaps forceful with your language. Don't say, I'll take nominations. Go, I'll hear suggestions. Because only you make nominations, uh, only you make proposals. So by all means, you can welcome suggestions if that is a part of your tax strategy or uh, merit heading into a Senate session. But uh, yeah, think about the language you're using as well. Because this, <coughs> this is your session, this is your Senate. Um, you be the leader, okay? That goes for everybody. Okay. Yes, sir. So we shall uh, skip any further voting for the Pontifus Maximus and move on to the next step. Um. Which is the appointment or election of a dictator. We are currently at war in uh. separate wars with, uh, with strength greater than 20. With, with, we have one with a strength greater than 20, don't we? Yeah, so this is something that I, I only learnt just recently. It is if uh, um, either total strength or combined land and fleet strength is 20 or greater. So in that case, for the First Punic War, yeah, First Punic War very much easily meets that because both the strength, yep. strength of 10 and naval strength of 10 is 20. So, yep, that is uh, allowed to appoint a dictator. So I shall appoint a dictator? No, uh, you have to have an agreement with your co-consul. Uh, I think my co-consul agrees that we uh, will make Fabius a dictator. Uh, I'd like to hear that voice, please. Just for yes, the record. I agree. <laughs> 
So I shall now hand over to the dictator. All right, so let's let's uh, anoint the dictator with his uh, respective plaque and token. So uh, who's it? Fabius Maximus, is it? Yes. Okay, so let's drag across um, the dictator plaque and grab you the dictator token here, um, n noting that um, the censor office is, uh, is going to be voted on. Um, so we'll drag that to the center sand pit there. And uh, we'll take the sensor name plaque there as well. Now you get to add seven influence uh, to your rating. Mm -hmm. If you would like to go ahead and add seven to your thirteen. Uh, and now the presiding magistrate is going to hand over as well. So I'll take that across. Uh, the dictator now becomes the presiding magistrate. I guess, I mean, to make some room, these can in fact all be lined up over here for the benefit of uh, other players as a random one there. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think you have 90 influence. You'll need to adjust that. Oh, was that a 9? I thought that was a 2. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A 9 and a 2 are a little bit different. <laughs> And I was getting the nine before. I had the, at first. I thought it maybe it was a two. They could <laughs> zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, that is fair enough. Anyway. All right. And uh, now that the dictator has acquired his influence, uh, has acquired his post. Uh, he may now go ahead and appoint his master of horse. Uh, so you just get to pick someone eligible in Rome that's not already holding an office, essentially. Yes. Um, so I would like someone spiritual. So I'd like uh, Cornelius of the um, Sibibus to uh, ride out with me. All right. So let's grab Cornelius as the anointed master of horse. Um, he is his happy dappy tokens here. Let's bring this up. There's the master of horse for you. Uh, you're going to get an extra plus three. Uh, if you want to steal some from above uh, Indominus there uh, to give yourself a total of nine influence now. So you get plus three influence as Master of Horse. All right, very exciting. Lots of lots of things happening here. You get a job, and you get a job, and you get a job. <laughs> uh, that's tops. Uh, all right, and uh, I think that's uh, all very good. Okay, over to the presiding magistrate. Uh, continue to run your Senate. Wait, is that me now? It is, in fact, you, yes. Okay, great. So, we do... I feel we do need to do some uh, clean-up of this uh, Senate to ensure we don't have excessive um, taxes being taken out of um, shipbuilding. So, I would be very curious if uh, anyone would like to um, assist in the quest for low taxes from shipbuilding so you you guys are all all very friendly people i mean you, take take command you pick the people that you want or propose the people that you want to see into the positions of power the, the sensor is a powerful position they they wield um yeah don't 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 be giving it away lightly but That's hey, hey your, your senate I, I just just wanted to point that out <laughs> That's a good point. Take, look, uh, for any of these, uh, for any of the times that you are presiding magistrate, um, if you need to take a break to collect your thoughts, think about proposals. Absolutely, take take a break. If it needs to be another five minutes, so you can look at candidates and assess them for viability. Absolutely, we don't need to rush this. Um, really think about who you're picking, because uh, although you know. Uh, at the forefront of your mind, it's all about Rome. In the back of your mind, you should still always be thinking, how does this benefit me? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. make make deals with people, right? I say, all right, I will offer you this job if uh, if uh, you tickle my back or whatever the case may be, right? And that's where your whisper functions come in again, all right? Uh, really, really make people bite for it. Yes, yep, there's wars and the Republic's important, but never forget... Never forget, how does this benefit me? That is true. Um, let me do a little bit of tactical review. 
That's all right. Poetry perspective. All right, so he's assessing for possible candidates for censor, who will uh, then take over as presiding magistrate and uh, make a decision okay. on prosecutions. They need a um, major. Don't they? And that has to be in Rome, right? Has to be someone in Rome. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be at the party to drink. That's true. And what is important? Is oratory or influence? Uh, the censor is is merely decisions on on who gets to uh, cop the stick. <coughs> uh, so there's nothing else in play there. Okay, and it can't already be a consul. No, nope, can't, they can't be holding an office. Other, other than censor, but the censor is now the dictator, so uh, it, it can't be them. Okay, so it's actually relatively limited the number of people who I can propose. Right, so you only look at prior console markers. Yes, and I can't actually propose anyone, you know, who would be one of the optimates. <laughs> Gerentius is one option. Fluvius is another option. <laughs> Two inches. Begla begrudgingly. <laughs> uh, they are options, that is true. Furious is another option. And that's it. you got three candidates to pick from. Great. Well, I think um, I can clearly see that Furious has um, done a fantastic job as a previous uh, Rome consul. <laughs> So I would like to propose this upstanding man with very little of obvious corruption to be um, to be the censor. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Furious is going. Yes, come on. He's only a major, minor, minor, minor corruption. Yeah. Saved by the proposal. Indeed. Um, so I would um, like to uh, move that to a vote. Um, and I will start voting with um, Sivabus. Team four. We have ourselves a convoy. Um, I will follow up um, with the Optimates. We'll um, vote uh, 12 for. Um, can I get um, Dollar Bell, your vote, the Reapers Party? Uh, uh, nine four. Um, can I get uh, Draquinius? Draquinius, you have it. Uh, so that's Indominus. Sorry, Indominus. Um, <clears throat> sixteen against. Sixteen against. And. Can we get a vote from Hand of God? Uh, 12 against. 12 against. Okay, that's interesting. So that's 28 against. And then that's 22, 31, 4. So motion passes. All right. Uh, so let's grab some uh, decorative bling for our new sensor. Um, there we go. Uh, go ahead and add five influence now to Furious's eight. Um, so grab yourself, steal yourself some more grey tokens there and, and go ahead and update that. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, if Fabius Maximus wants to pass his presiding magistrate name plaque just up to the Siwidus Panem uh, faction area to indicate that the censor will now be taking uh, control of this portion of the Senate. It's on the way. There you go. Perfect. Lots of plaques happening over there. It's busy, busy streets. Very good. Who was talking about jobs for the boys before? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and then over to Sempronius now as the... Oh, he's still updating his card there. But right, he is now the presiding magistrate uh, and will run uh, prosecutions. Now, uh, it's worth noting here again that uh, uh, as per normal, you've got your choice of... Um, two minor prosecutions or one major prosecution or of course you can decide to have no prosecutions but don't forget 
Outside of that, in addition, you also have the major prosecution against the uh, ex Pontifus Maximus that you can also pursue should you desire, in addition to your standard uh, standard uh, prosecution choices. Okay. Uh, Is that in addition? Yeah, in addition. That's correct. In addition to that's why you've got the two major markers on alias right now. So he can be one, he can be prosecuted for his uh, term in office. Right, but then he can also be prosecuted again, should he have, uh, for his uh, Pontifus Maximus failing, and that is allowed under the rules. So he can, in fact, face two major prosecutions um, should the censor decide such a fate. Okay, well, we've got enough with um, the wars and everything else going on. I'm not going to prosecute, no, no prosecutions issue. Right. Uh, d despite my funny faces, the censor has spoken. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's right. The censor wants to hand back the presiding magistrate, Plark, back to the dictator to uh, resume control of the Senate. Uh, somebody has asked me a question secretly, and I'll answer with the following response. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> that's slightly worrying. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Warwick's eyes are brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, forward slash, will you date me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, right, the presiding magistrate uh, has returned back to the dictator. Okay, Fabius Maximus, all powerful, uh, all knowing, uh, Senate session is back to you. Okay, so no election of provincial governors. Now, I am willing to, well, especially with. Alias's current, or oh, sorry, I think we should discuss the land bill. That's minus ten. We all seem very comfortable sponsoring games, so I would like to discuss the idea of removing the land bill. So um, just just for clarity purposes, right? As a part of the proposal, you need to yes, indicate who the sponsor and co-sponsor. Yeah, great. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm just trying to look at who's oldest. <laughs> 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 so I'm happy for Genius to be the proposer, but I'm going to need someone to volunteer and volunteer, not just basically offer to be bribed um to sec to second it second it second it i think that it's a bit rich that you want nothing from us you want us to lose popularity for for nothing in return that's a bit for, harsh for the good, for the good of rome <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm i'm not going to be getting any benefit from um yeah, from removing this, this this increases the overall treasury and the future of them. We are currently at how many wars? Three. Three. War. <clears throat> and what does this do for our uh, unrest level? Uh, it'll plus increase three. it by plus three. Yeah, so... But we got it. Or... I've seen there's a lot of willingness to host games. It's, it's a discussion point. I think it's worth removing that because we're already at 85 in terms of our state treasury. I'm uh, just a quick point of order. I'm just reading rule 1.09.621 on repeals. It, they may not need a co-sponsor. Um, so a senator in Rome must volunteer to sponsor the repeal and he must have popularity equal to or greater than the amount he would lose by sponsoring the voting for the repeal. Oh, well, he um, doesn't have that. So you know, in this case, it is four. So you need a senator with four or more popularity to sponsor this bill to repeal it as a part of your proposal. Well, I think the only person who could do that would be Cato the Elder. But is Cato interested enough in the future of Rome is the question. Um, I believe that people who vote for their uh, or sponsor the games are in it for their own popularity. Those same people should repeal and take the brunt of that popularity loss. <clears throat> 
That's a fair point. Well, so maybe people should consider donating to the treasury next time instead of holding games. And then we can keep it on the land bill stand. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't pass a bill to force people to pay, can we? I think we went no. over that, didn't we? <clears throat> no, no, that's right, but we can. Can we have a, can we have a tax law? <laughs> Income tax law? <laughs> they don't seem to have them, but that would be useful. So, okay. So remember, oh. yeah, you've got the power of public agreements, which can essentially force people to pay, but, right, a, a proposal cannot force someone. Uh, yeah, right, just, just um, all the corruption markers get hidden again. Yep, great point. Uh, well picked up, Sensor. So, right, uh, while we're thinking about the current uh, state of affairs of the land bill, if you've got a corruption marker, please return it to the uh, the, the, the pit of markers there, uh, and you can also hide all the corruption portions on your uh, concessions. That sounds good. Okay, well... I'm sensing there's not much energy behind uh, moving the land bill. Well, so. I, I, I'm happy to repeal it uh, if I can get a public agreement to get some votes on whatever bill I would like uh, in the future. So if I can uh, get a public agreement on some support, I would be happy to co-sponsor that. I have uh, four popularity on Sulpicius, so I could easily do that right now. Some, some votes, I think we can be more specific. Oh, well, I would just like, uh, I guess, okay, to be specific, on my next proposal, I would like you to vote 100% in favour of my uh, uh, bill, I guess, proposal, in return for me co-sponsoring the uh, land bill repeal. Without knowing what it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I like the way this guy walks. This is great. Hmm. It's just a, look. If you want to get rid of it, that's that's the price. Oh, you've sold me. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so if we co-sponsor, we lose how many points? No, out? no. As I just read, it only needs to be a sponsor. There's no co-sponsor. Yeah. So, you, but whoever sponsors it loses four popularity. And they must have four or more popularity to lose. Can I just ask if you're voting for? Uh, the repeal. You right. also lose popularity. Correct. If you are voting for the repeal, you will also lose popularity. So do you have to say who's voting for it? Which who's actually going to lose? It's going to be this the faction leader. Um, so f for me, that would, um, yeah. Let's let's go back and have a look at that rule because that's that's not that's not one hundred percent clear, is it? Um, I, I I imagine it would be every senator that votes in favour of the repeal. Um, Oh. So, but let's have a look. So the, um, okay, yep. So we'll get the clue from, uh, I'm just looking at the, the rule here. Um, okay. Every senator who votes against the land bill or in the converse of the repeal lowers his popularity as indicated on the land bill's table. So perhaps um, some strategic voting Perhaps if you have, you want to think about passing enough votes to get the proposal across the line without having to have everyone lose popularity. So you're using some of your votes from your faction just to get that majority while everyone else is voting no, I guess, in your faction. Okay. So okay, it's going to be too complicated. Let's win a war first. And then... <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, is, is the uh, popularity, is that cumulative? So if you go from the stage three or type three to type zero, would you lose four because you're dropping four? Um, uh, just rephrase your question for me. So if you if you drop from three to two, land bill no, type, no, no, um, you lose two, and then from two to one you lose one, and from one to zero you lose one. I, I, I don't think that's I don't think that's how it works. If you repeal a land, type three land bill, it just gets removed. It doesn't downgrade. Right. Okay. Um, I'm happy to be told otherwise, but right, it's purely just removing the type three land bill. Yeah, it makes sense. It's only it's only ten, isn't it, per year for the land bill? Correct, ten a year. Um, and if you look at the land bills table at the top left under the state treasury, that's all your data that you need there. Yeah. So under the state treasury is the land bills table that gives you all that information. 
I think the dictator has changed his mind. Yes, I think the dictator has thought this and this is something to put into the long term basket. So let's move on to uh, the straight the slightly less fun part of how many legions do we need to raise? So are we... It's, it's, well, which war are we fighting first, the one with or without the Navy? Uh, would be without, wouldn't it? So we have to go for a victory. I think we have to go for victory. The problem is we've got an imminent war, which will double the Punic War. But the Punic War is already doubled, isn't it? No, it's not. Not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. So right now, the, let's just so just looking at the land strength. The land strength is thirteen. Once the second Punic War becomes active, the 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 war uh, is doubled, so it becomes a strength of what's well, only it doesn't include the heroes, so it should be twenty three as the strength of that war. Oh, Are you sure it's not the second yeah. war strength that's doubled, so it becomes thirty? Uh, the second yeah, Punic yeah. War also doubles, but you have to fight them in order. So the second Punic War will never be more than 15, because you'll have to defeat the first Punic War first. But okay. um, if you're fighting the war simultaneously, um, you'll end up fighting the first war first. If you get a loss there, and you've still sent a force against the second Punic War, then its strength is in fact 30, because you didn't achieve the victory against the first Punic War, if you understand what I mean. But I, I understand what you mean, yeah. but that sounds uh, awful. But, but we've only got limited money, so how are we going we well, to raise... Got, we've got a dictator and a master of horse who's yes. combined military, okay. it's nine, I believe. Okay, but we need uh, at least two fleets, which is going to be, because of the manpower shortage, at least 40 from the treasury. Well, so, do we need two fleets? Because we're going to have nine plus our fleet strength. So which is about eight. Where's what we've... Where's the stuff we've already got? Where've they gone again? Uh, Julius has that. It's still over with me. <coughs> In the Reapers. Cool. So we've got eight at the moment. Eight fleets? Yeah, we've got eight fleets at the moment. We eight. add nine Admiral Tree, so that gives us to uh, 17. Minus one for evil omens. <laughs> Oh, right, okay. Oh, yeah, you and your evil, I mean. Who, who drew that card? Bloody hell. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> we can afford up to four units. So four fleets, you mean? Well, we might want to have another tree as well. One, two, three, four, Because another six. option, do we want to do the Gaelic War first, which is just a land war? Yeah, but what if we lose more troops against them? We might win, but we might also lose troops. Yeah, well, that could happen whichever war we do first. Yeah, but then the Pun second Punic War comes in, right? And that doubles yeah. the first Punic War. So you think it's a priority to get the first Punic War out of the way? Yeah. Because the, the second one, yeah, well, okay, good point. Well, then we're going to need uh, how many more ships? Well, none, theoretically, if, if someone doesn't roll double ones. <laughs> <laughs> the way things have been going. Snake eyes. <laughs> but let's say, let's say we get two fleet and two soldiers, and then we could possibly do both wars. Can you do two wars in one? Abs yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so uh, you can either do that as an individual proposal or as separate proposals. Uh, you'll appoint commanders in order of their way that they go to war. So in this case, the first war, the dictator is master horse will be the commander. The second war will be the field console. And the third war will be the Rome console, etc. Oh, okay. No, we don't want to do that. Yeah, but the forces are split up, so we can't send all the forces off to do the Punic War, and then those same forces go on to do the Gallic War. No, they, they can't be in two places at once. So if we put the dictator and the master of horse together, we get a bonus of nine, right? Yeah. Just want to get that confirmed. So, <clears throat> and then we can send the field marsh, the field consul, to do the Gaelic war. Yes, and so just send one person or something, because then that invalidates the um, that stops the um, unprosecuted war. And they would. A chance of not surviving. Uh, yes. So it may not be field consul. It may be Rome consul could actually lead it. 
so long as so long as the field console goes before the Rome console. Uh, Kato the Elder is uh, is too old to go to war. <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah. It's got flat feet, I hear. <laughs> so what's what what other options? What options do we have? Two of each? Was that one if, we, if we split our forces, I know you want to try and get two wars out of the way, but if we split our forces, we increase our chances of losing both of them. Uh, sorry, I'm not saying we split the forces. We're just saying yeah. take only one unit to the Gallic Wars. I think, I think given our, to be fair, given our luck at the moment, I think basically we should, yeah, minimise right. the options for luck to mess so us up. Can we put the dictator of the the Master of Horse and the Field Console in one battle. No. I, or, I think we probably could, but we don't get any, we don't get any advantage from the Field Console. Okay. No, no you, you simply can't. Okay. Yeah, okay. James all military activity. I, I don't think we need to spend anything. I think we we got enough strength to do it. <laughs> I think it's. I think we need some insurance. We've we've not been. I'm. I don't feel like trusting yeah. our luck. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd go along with that. I've, I've been sacrificing some white bulls to the god of Mars. <laughs> I feel positive about this. Who's going to vote for us? Is it going to be the dictator? I assume it'll be the dictator, but I'm I'm happy to allow someone else to roll the dice. <clears throat> so, so you're saying we're not going to buy any more? One yeah. second. So why do we not want to do this? Because I got the double at the moment. So what was that? So we don't want to get any more forces just because it's going to cost us double, an extra 20. Yeah, we can afford four four forces. So why wouldn't we do it? Yeah, I, think, I think we should do it. Because we haven't been we've rolling back. We've got another. <laughs> so if we, even if we just defeat one more, we've got three more looming. So... Um, we don't lose our... <laughs> And our chances of success are higher the more forces we take, aren't they? Yes. So why not? It's not as if we're going to buy ten; we're only buying four. So well, it costs almost as much as ten in another round. <laughs> we don't need any naval battle for the Gaelic Wars. Correct. We will need it for. Yeah, but point. we have to. We have, have to win the naval war to, to do the. To have a chance at the land war. Yeah, just for the first Punic War, but none of the others actually require a naval battle. They just require five ships to, to transport. That's true. So I think any any ships that we buy now are gonna be lost and wasted if we win this. And we're already nine uh, what do we say, seventeen to ten uh, uh, actually to thirteen up. Okay, well, well, two more ships then. Um, I think let's go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So two more ships and two more legions, and we go and do the first Punic War. Is that what we're saying? I think that's what that's what it is to raise two two ships and two legions. And then um, we send everybody to do, win the first Punic War. Correct. All right, let's do that then. Can we send just one, like, just the one soldier to prosecute the Gallic War? Otherwise, it's going to cost us 20. Well, one soldier will cost us 20 right now. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> just, just, as, just as a point <laughs> of five. Five. <laughs> just as a point of interest, so to answer uh, Posthumus Awem's question, can you send just one unit with the commander to prosecute a war? The direct answer is yes, um, but you have to remember that um, that point in the rules about the combat base number. Uh, if that is equal to or less than the, the certain value, we can check that. It has to. The commander has to consent. So because he's being sent to a war where. Uh, you don't have that strength superiority, the commander must consent. Uh, he cannot be forced to go to the war. And I'm, I thought we had a dictator in place. <laughs> 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 okay, so are, are we willing to spend 80 for two of each? Do yes. we need to vote for this? I think we do. 
So, shall I split? I'll split them because I think it'll be easier just from a scribing point of view. So, this is a proposal specifically just to raise two additional fleets and two additional fleets. That's, that's, that's not your place, Scriber. Only the uh, presiding magistrate can frame the proposal. He is a presiding magistrate, isn't he? Is he? <laughs> I am, yes. <laughs> Good. As the dictator. It, 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 was, it wasn't clear to me because he didn't say, I, the presiding magistrate. He didn't say that. So, uh, that is true. Yeah, but nice and formal, everybody. Um, Very good. So, yes, I, alias, um, propose that we raise two fleets and two legions. Um, and I'll start the voting from the Optimates with 12-4. Um, um, so, uh, can we get um, Calquinius, please? Sorry, Indominus. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 16. Thank you. Uh, Reapers? Uh, nine in favour. Thank you. Hand of God? Uh, 12 in favour. And um, Panem Exodus? Uh, 10 in favour. Great. Unanimous. Do I get any bonuses from that? No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, so they, oh, are, oh, they oh. are active forces now. We can drop them up top. Oh, okay. Fine. So what happens here in terms of the pro console? So do we have to specifically recall the pro console, or is that just... Uh, yeah, so do we have to say these are being sent to relieve the pro console with the dictator and the master force? Uh, it, it, right, whatever the proposal is, uh, if you want to withdraw the commander and replace him, um, so be it. Uh, if you want to rebolster those forces, so be it. That's also a proposal. Or you can all wrap that into one. You can say, remove proconsul, add this commander, throw these forces in, however you want to frame it, it's up to you. So, so does the proconsul's military get added to the total if he stays there? If he stays there as the commander, the one and only commander, uh, the answer to the question is yes, but you can't add more commanders where there is already a commander. Yeah, so it's not worth keeping him there and risking him and losing him for future wars. Uh, that's a decision for the Senate to make. Yeah, we're just discussing in the Senate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, exactly. So I, I'd like to move to, uh, so as presiding officer, I'd like to propose that we recall Julius um, from the... Um, Punic Peninsula um, to uh, return to Rome. Oh, that, that, what, happened that to, what happened to the veteran legion? It's still there. Oh. Yes, oh, the, veteran, the veteran survived. Luckily. Yes. Um, yeah, don't forget, so. yeah, that counts as an extra one because it's a veteran. Yes. So it's a proposal to recall Julius to return to Rome, leaving his forces in Pune. Pune? Punic? I think he, there's a... He's been sacked because he lost the war or didn't do well. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to just double check. There might be some technicality. If, uh, if you're withdrawing the commander, the forces also must return. Um, uh, but I think... Okay. Um, so we'll make it replace... Yeah, I, I do a I do a withdraw and replace. Um, otherwise, there may be some limitation. We can check in the rules that if the forces have moved, been withdrawn, they can't then be sent back. Uh, it may be the case, but I think to be safe here, you can eliminate that and just say replacing with this military commander. Yes. Um, okay. So how about this? Um, a proposal to replace Julius with Fabius and Cornelius, reinforcing the existing force with two fleets and two legions to prosecute the Punic War. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all those. Oh, sorry. So, in terms of voting, so it's proposed by Elias. So, four. Um, again, Optimates will go in with plus 12. Um, and let's go to the Reapers party. Uh, nine in favour. Um, Hand of God. Uh, 12 in favour. Um, Parnum at Sibibus. 10 in favour. And Calquinius. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> 16 in favour. 
go. Another unanimous. All right. So what I'm going to do here is just move the forces just under the first Punic War again there, just to make that clear. And why did they move back? Let's fix that. Cool. There we go. So. And now that we've got new commanders, we're going to replace some tokens here. So Fabius is now at war, and the Master of Horse is now going to be at war. Now, did that proposal include rebolstering with the forces? I don't think yes. I, I did. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. I, I just didn't hear it, that's all. But that's fine, if it's on the record. Great. So they've all been uh, added in there now to the First Punic War. Okay. Great. Um, so that is now, uh, the presiding magistrate has now sent himself away from war and that has automatically concluded the Senate phase. So we are, we are now moving into the uh, combat phase. Okay. Um, should, shouldn't they, oh, oh, so they don't have to be in the active forces with that? Uh, no, no, so we're using new at war tokens now to show that those uh, senators are in fact at war. So if you look at both the okay. Master of Horse and Dictator, it actually says at war on their tokens now. Oh, okay. Yeah, just to indicate that they are in fact out of Rome <laughs> marching. All right. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and fight some wars here. Um, let's, uh, let's do some strength calculations. So tell me about the strength of the Roman force. Um, let's start with, um, we're, we're doing a naval battle here again, uh, to start with, uh, which, um, so let's, let's work out our naval fleet strength, not the military ratings, just the naval fleet strength, which is, somebody read that to one, me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so you have ten fleets right now. All right. Didn't we add a couple to that? Mm. We had eight before. Yeah, that's all our fleets. <laughs> that's right. Uh, now, what is the combined military rating of the Master of Horse uh, and the Dictator? Dictator is five and Master of Horse is four, so nine. So, right, so you've got a current naval strength of 19. And uh, let's talk about the enemy's naval force, uh, which is what, 13? 13. Okay, and what's 19 minus 13, folks? Quick math. Six. 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 All right, so there is our magic modifier number. Now, before we go rolling, which will, will be uh, um, Cornelius Calum as dictator, as the prime commander of this force, uh, in just a moment you roll your 3d6. He's, uh, now, does he have any uh, uh, special abilities that we need to take care of? Do you want to read those out from his card? Uh, yep, so he... Where was it going? So many random tokens. <clears throat> um, halves all losses rounded up in combat unless Master of Horse. Cool, okay. Um, so this should be a less costly battle, hopefully. Uh, what, you're really aiming for victory. Okay, so <laughs> on the unmodified 3D6 roll that you're about to roll, you do not want to roll an 8, a 12, a 13, 11, or a 14. That's quite a few. Okay, that is, that is quite a few. And... and I said don't roll a triple one, but yeah, don't yeah, don't seven. roll don't roll that. Uh, uh, he's already he's he's jumped into it already. He's rolled a seven, uh, which is thankfully not any of those numbers, which is which is great. So uh, we're going to minus one from that roll because of the bad omen, which becomes a six, uh, and and six and seven is thirteen. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Six All right. Six and seven is thirteen. Let's go to our I'm combat results table, eight, and it is a stalemate. Six. But and no I'm losses. Warwick, yeah, uh, holding. Yeah, six and six is, tw is 12, not 13. No, no, it's six and seven, is it not? No, it's six and six. Uh, I, yes, did not, I, did, I didn't minus the, the minus the one from uh, from his role, yeah, so yeah. so it is in fact 12. Yeah. All right, so um, that's a slightly worse stalemate with one legion and one fleet loss, uh, <laughs> but uh, losses are halved or something. You want to remind us of that rule? Yeah, but they rounded up, so... Oh, okay, so it's just still one legion and one fleet, okay. So uh, let me just uh, randomly uh, choose your uh, losses there. So it's this one and, and that one, oddly enough. Why is that one on an angle? That's strange. Funny that one got picked. Um, so... Someone's favourite 10th legion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, now uh, in terms of... Um, popularity loss, it's actually rounded down 
uh, if I recall correctly. So I don't actually think you cop any popularity loss. Uh, so it's one popularity for every two legions rounded down, um, okay. or two units. Uh, you don't lose popularity on fleets, it's just land forces. Um, and so you, your popularity will not change uh, as a result of this stalemate. Um, but outside of that, right, uh, no, no victory there. Um, we didn't quite get the role that we wanted. The bad omen didn't really help us uh, either. Um, yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh, so that will conclude the combat phase there. Um, noting the first Gaelic War will now become an unprosecuted war. Um, and uh, eventually we'll see that uh, second imminent war um, pop up there shortly. So let's uh, round out with the revolution phase. Uh, we come to the intrigue uh, part of our session first, which is players can play, trade or discard red cards if they need to. I don't think anyone's being forced to discard yet, which is good. So let's start with the highest ranking available officer, which is in fact uh, the Optimus and the Dictator. Is there any cards that you'd like to play from your hand at this stage? No. No? Okay, let's go around to the Reaper's Party. Would you like to play any cards from your hand at this stage? So, is this when I could give someone a concession? Uh, this is a place where you could give somebody a concession, yes. Okay. Well, yes, I do want to play a card then. Okay. If you're, if you're giving it to someone, might I suggest you uh, give it to them face down. Uh, so you'll play it to the table. It'll automatically be face down. And then if you are, in fact, passing it to someone, you may do so. And then, uh, that, and, and then if, if somebody is, in fact, taking that card from you, then they can right-click and pick it up and take it into their hand. Oh, but if I'm just giving it to one of my own guys... Oh, is that what you mean? Yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. If you're just putting it on one of your senators, then that's fine. Yeah. You can you put it the right way up. So you okay. can go ahead and do that now. All right. Oh, I thought it was going to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, wait a minute. Uh, and... Let's uh, see what oh. it is. Uh, I'm going to send it to the back. There we go. And yeah, he's, put in, he's put in Harbour Fees. And uh, let's have a look at Harbour Fees there. He gets three talents a turn. Okay. Um, very good. I need the money. He needs the money. All right. So you're not corrupt. Make sure you hide those portions there. Um, okay. All right. Let's talk about uh, Takunia's Pro Praetor Faction. Do you wish to play any cards from your hand at this stage? No, thank you. All right. Across the Seawitters to Panem. Would you like to play any cards from your hand? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, across to the Hand of God faction, would you like to play any cards from your hand? Uh, no, uh, thank no. you. Okay. Uh, well, I heard two Hands of God factions there, which was strange enough. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, look, I think we've played all those cards. All right, back to our cheat sheets there. Nobody needs to discard. Uh, nobody's in a position to declare rebellion, and therefore that will uh, end the turn. Um, right, uh, I guess we're out of the room. Any, any final thoughts, comments, questions, queries, death threats? So that was our fourth year, right? That was your fourth year. Yes. That's correct. Yep. So how long does, does this go on? <laughs> it, it goes on for as long as until you find uh, a victor or you all die. That's essentially how long it goes for. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's pretty glum, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty tough. Peter the Elder doesn't have to take responsibility for this year. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, we're not very good at winning any awards, are we? No, no, we're not. Well, we won one, I think, didn't we? Yeah, the well, first one, one I think we ever did, and then we haven't lost the war yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. No, we just keep losing ships. We need a decent admiral. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> well, I don't think you'll find one with military rating higher than nine. Yes, that's true. That was not good. Well. Mm, very. Well, I can't criticise you. I didn't roll any better, better than I was the general. Your roll was one better than than Julius's roll last time. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, right. I think overall we did not have good luck this round at all. That was. So there's evil omens. <laughs> there's yeah. the evil omens. You got to um, trust those evil omens, too. I know. One of the best factions suffered a huge loss of uh, influence. Um, <laughs> you're not biased at all, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, uh, rounds don't get much, much, uh, much worse than that. Um, you know, I have seen people pull through from from this. Uh, it'll take some careful planning. Uh, 
Yeah. And uh, and some better roles, I think, going <laughs> forwards. <laughs> right, well, uh, at this point in time, I think uh, if everyone's in agreement, we'll uh, conclude our session there for yet another Monday. Uh, and so all of our senators and uh, curators are dismissed uh, for so the evening. Is the plan at the moment same time next week? Same time next week, uh, unless there's uh, something that comes up. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry, can, can I just have my influence double-checked? I calculated as 27. Is that let's, correct? Let's have a look. Uh, your, your faction influence? Yeah, uh, it, and it could have changed during the course of uh, of the session if you haven't updated it. So thirteen plus nine plus three, what's that come out to be? Well, that rhymes. Twenty-five. There you go. So you just have you just haven't updated it yet. Yeah, no, it was up at twenty. Yeah, because you've got the three extra for being master of horses. True. And that goes to twenty-eight. And, and of course, the influence that you gained from uh, sense of this uh, round as well. From what? From sensor, you also gain influence from sensor this round as well. Very nice. Okay, thank you. I was yeah. just trying to figure out how to look at 29. Thank you. Hang on, you got yeah. So just tw it's 27. Just so put it in your box there, right? It's yeah. It's 29. Why? Didn't you up your 27? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yes. So it was on 29 down here in the tracker, which is what I was checking. Right, right. 27 in the tracker, not 29. There we go. Okay, thanks, guys. Well, it's been Thank, a pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, well, goodbye to same our senators. Time same, same time next week. Yep. Uh, and uh, for everybody watching the stream, I'll, I'll have a chat with you now. But, yeah, goodbye to our senators. Great. Thank See you, guys. Thanks, week. Um, don't go away, those watching the stream. Right, there we go. Another session concluded uh, and another session not in favour of the Senate. Um, not a particularly desirable outcome. Lots of bad rolls, bad omens and, and undesirable combat results there. Look, that was it was a, a better outcome. Um, could they have done something differently to achieve a better result that round than that year? Perhaps um, they decided to uh, re-engage with the first Punic War. Obviously uh, put off, perhaps a little bit scared by the imminent second Punic War coming in. Uh, but I think uh, some other strategists out there may argue that, uh, you know, what they they probably should have pursued uh, fighting either the first Gallic War or the second Macedonian War for uh, a quick kill or two. Um, they may not have had the forces for two wars, but certainly... Certainly one of the wars, they could get some, some money, maybe even a province, uh, and then keep their war tallies down. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough, um, and they've got lots of thinking to do. Money's getting short. Uh, they've got lots of uh, ageing senators now, which are starting to make decisions difficult. It's um, Hopefully the, the draw is favour in the year to come from the uh, early Republic deck that they're drawing from. But yeah, look, it's pretty tough. What's If they were trying to guess probability uh, of them succeeding from here, it's, it's low. As I said to the guys in there, it's not impossible to come back from this, uh, but it is, it is pretty tough. Uh, we're seeing very, what is essentially very short Senate sessions uh, from what we'd normally see. Generally, we're seeing one decision about um, a military and then, and then away we go. And obviously, with the departure of the presiding magistrate, that shut that Senate session down for this round. Uh, not a lot of talk about anything else. Uh, we saw them talk about the land bill first up uh, early on there, but they got cold feet. Uh, they didn't go ahead. Uh, they couldn't, uh, I guess, find perhaps a consenting a sponsor to take that bill through and everyone was uh, put off by the popularity loss that they would have had to have faced going forward. So nonetheless, that will continue to be an ongoing uh, fee for them uh, to pay in the revenue and uh, debit phases to come. The straight treasury, as I look at it right now, is pretty low. We're sitting at five talents. Now, of course, that, that gets rebolstered in the revenue phase next year. Uh, but then, of course, they've got to pay for all their forces so it's uh, it's tough. Uh, one of the things we haven't done that will need to be done is the uh, death chit draw for the loss of units, and that will we'll do that first and foremost when we get back next week. Uh, so don't let us forget. In fact, I'll make a note to make sure that death chit draw is done for the uh, commander and master of horse uh, for those two losses. Uh, so we make sure we won't forget that. Perhaps we need to pull out our checklist to make sure uh, we remember that for the future. 
But uh, I guess good to see them have pointed the Dictator and Master of Horse this year to help give them that extra bonus. But anyway, good luck to them. Uh, don't forget, you can join us again uh, for this uh, fifth session, fifth assembly next week. That's 11.30 a.m. Rome time, which is Central uh, EST. Our, for those who are watching locally on the Eastern Seaboard of Australia, that is 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, of course, uh, you can also visit us on uh, Instagram, which is AustNovaRoma, A-U-S-T, NovaRoma. Uh, and of course, we're also on Facebook. Feel free to look us up. Give us a follow. Give us a join. If you're watching here this evening, please give us a follow on the channel. That certainly uh, helps us out here as well. For all other questions that you may have, please uh, send us an email at AustNovaRoma at Outlook. Dot com. That's A-U-S-T, Nova Roma at Outlook.com. Uh, and until next time, uh, thanks for watching and Walete. <laughs>